Right now, embrace the awareness that your life is a game which you have been pushed into playing. While you are mentally engrossed in the game, you cannot objectively evaluate a situation or influence the course of events in any significant way. So first, come down from the audience hall. Take a good, calm look at everyone and everything around you and say to yourself, in this moment, I am fully awake and aware of where I am, what is happening, what I am doing, and why. Transurfing principles. One, awakening. Wake up right here, right now. Be aware and remember that everyone is a dreamer and everything that is happening around you is nothing more than a dream. Only the dream no longer has any control over you. Now that you have woken up in the dream, you can influence how events will unfold. Your advantage lies in awareness. Feel your strength. Strength is always with you when you remember it. From now on, everything will be as you want it to be. Interpretation. Your birth into this life represents a new awakening after a series of past incarnations. Dream is about reality. From the moment you appeared in the world, you have had amazing abilities. You can hear the rustling of the morning stars, see auras and communicate with birds and animals. The entire world was an astonishing extravaganza of luminous energy and you were the magician, capable of controlling it. However, you soon fell once again under the influence of others and you were plunged into a dream. The dreamers constantly and intentionally focused your attention on the physical aspect of reality. As a result, your magical abilities were lost. Have you ever felt as if life were a dream in which reality is controlling you rather than you controlling it? The time now has come for you to reclaim your former power. Two, hack in the dream. Right now, embrace the awareness that your life is a game which you have been pushed into playing. While you are mentally engrossed in the game, you cannot objectively evaluate a situation or influence the course of events in any significant way. So first, come down from the audience hall. Take a good, calm look at everyone and everything around you and say to yourself, in this moment, I am fully awake and aware of where I am, what is happening, what I am doing, and why. Then, walk back onto the stage and continue playing your role while remaining the witness, like any other member of the audience. But now, you have a huge advantage. Awareness. You have hacked the game and acquired the ability to control it. Interpretation. When you dream, you are at the mercy of circumstance. The rational mind sleeps and accepts everything at face value, as if everything was unfolding as it should. Well, guess what? Waking life is exactly the same. You might think that reality somehow exists independently and that you are powerless to influence it, that you are mostly resigned to your lot. The set of capabilities given to you and your conditions of the environment in which you have to exist. All you could do is go with the flow of that of fate, from time to time making minor attempts to assert your rights. Is it really possible to change? Too right it is, and you will. Until now, you have probably perceived reality as you were taught to. Now, be aware that reality is like a dream. You can only control the situation through lucid dreaming. On stage, everyone is playing a role, and the actors are interacting with you in one way or another. They might expect something of you. Make impositions, requests, demands. They may help obstruct, love, or hate you. Look at the game consciously, from a distance, and you will soon understand it all. 3. Child of God There is a small particle of God in every one of us. You are a child of God, and your life is God's dream. By shaping your own reality with the power of intention, you fulfill God's will. Your intention is God's intention. As this is the case, how can you doubt that your intention will be realized? All it takes is for you to claim the right. When you ask God for something, it is just the same as if God asked something of himself. Can God really ask something of him or herself? Is there any one person alive from whom God would ask something of him or herself? God just takes what he wants. Do not ask, demand or strive. Shape your own reality by way of conscious intention. Interpretation. The world is a theater of dreams in which God is simultaneously a member of the audience 
an actor, a scriptwriter, and a producer. As a member of the audience, God observes the play that is unfolding on the stage. As an actor, God feels and experiences everything in the same way as the character with whom he is playing. God creates and controls reality through the intention of all living things. God placed a part of himself together with the soul inside every living being and then sent them out into the dream, into life. God gave every living soul the freedom and the power to create their own reality by the measure of their awareness. Practically all living beings omit to use this power of intentionally and consciously with clear purpose, developing their life. In a state of non-lucid dreaming, it is as if you are vaguely aware of wanting something without even realizing what exactly it is. Your intentions are therefore blurred, vague, and mostly unconscious. This is why you cannot control your life. In this respect, man has developed little more than animals. The pendulums have not only succeeded in taking away people's awareness of their own ability, they have perverted the very meaning of life, replacing the notion of being used of God with worship. Whereas in fact, the true goal of life and the idea of service of God exists in co-creation together with God for a star is born principle. In order to achieve real success, you have to stop following widely accepted stereotypes and walk your own path. Anyone who pulls out of the general system creates a new measure of success. Pendulums cannot bear individuality. They spot a rising star and have no choice but to make them a favorite. Once a new rule has been established, the ranks make a U-turn and start following the rising star. In order to establish your own rules, you have to be yourself. You can do it. You simply have to claim the privilege. Only you can decide what privileges you may or may not enjoy. Interpretation. People spend their entire lives being told they are far from perfect and that success, wealth, and fame are the inheritance of the elite. Pendulum do not deny that anyone can succeed, but they do carefully hide the fact that everyone has their own unique qualities and abilities. For the pendulums, individuality is like death itself. If all its adherents were to become free individuals, shaking off the strings of control, the pendulum would simply fall apart. Stars are born independently, but the pendulums light them up. The role model, the standard of success, is created intentionally to drive the aspirations of the mass in one direction. In other words, the pendulum's task is to drive everyone into a single rank and force them to obey a common rule. You will achieve nothing until you realize that you have to step out of the rank and file. There's no point in playing someone else's game where you are not the one making up the rules. Whatever you do, always initiate your own game. That is the secret of success. Five, the world mirror. The world is what you think of it. The world is simply a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. Life is a game in which the world puts the same riddle to all its inhabitants. Okay, guess, what do I look like? Everyone responds in their own way, according to their own perception. You are aggressive, you are cozy, or even you are cheerful, gloomy, friendly, hostile, happy, ill-fated. The interesting thing is that in this quiz, everyone is a winner. The world agrees with you, and it appears exactly as you wish it to be. So what do you think of your world? Interpretation. When a person is convinced that all the best things in this world are sold out, their shelves will remain empty. Let me read that to you one more time. When a person is convinced that all the best things in this world have already sold out, their shelves will remain empty. When they think that buying a high quality item will mean standing in a huge queue and then parting with a large sum of money, then that is exactly what will happen. If a person's expectations are pessimistic and riddled with doubt, then they will undoubtedly be justified. If a person expects to meet with an unfriendly environment, their misgivings will be proven true. However, when a person is imbued with the innocent thought that the world has reserved the best in life for them, well, this also works. The eccentric, who does not know that nothing can be achieved without a struggle, somehow finds himself or herself at the counter. 
where there just has to be a fresh delivery exactly timed for them. Then they suddenly learn that the first buyer gets everything for free. A long queue forms behind them of people who know that the reality of life is pretty miserable and all other fools were just lucky. If someday, when confronted with the realities of life, the lucky eccentric changes their opinion of the world, well, their reality will change accordingly. And when they finally open their eyes to the truth, well, they're going to be thrown right back to the very back of the queue. Six, the boomerang. Whatever thoughts you send out into the world will return to you like a boomerang. What happens when you hate something? You put your heart and mind into a state of hatred, and this clear, sharp image is reflected in the mirror and fills the entire layer of your world. As a result, you get even more worked up and increase the power of your emotion. In your mind, you feel like sending everyone to hell. Get lost, a lot of you. But the mirror sends the boomerang back. You tell everyone where to get off and life sends you there instead. Beware of sending negative energy into the world mirror. If you do, you will receive the exact same response, totally unexpectedly. By the way, love is also a boomerang. Interpretation. Thoughts materialize in the world mirror. For example, if you are not satisfied with your outward appearance, you will take no pleasure in looking in the mirror. You focus all your attention on the features you do not like about yourself and state them as if they were fact. You have to understand that how you are reflected in the mirror corresponds to how you feel about yourself. Adopt a new rule. Don't look in the mirror. Peek in the mirror. Seek out the positives and ignore everything else. Pass everything you see through this filter. Concentrate your attention on the fact you want. The things you want. What did you used to do? You stated facts like, I don't like myself. I don't like my world. The mirror simply confirmed the fact of all of those. Well, it's true, and that's how it is. Well, guess what? Now you have a different task. Seek out the things you love, and at the same time, picture the desired image in your mind. From now on, all you will do is seek out and find signs that confirm evidence of positive change. Your own conspiracy theory. You'll find that things will get better and better with each passing day. If you practice this regularly, it won't be long before your jaw drops in amazement. 7. The Illusionary Reflection People are like the little kitten that stands in front of the mirror, not even realizing that is really looking at its own reflection. You might think that you are at the hands of circumstance, which you are incapable of changing, but this is a pure illusion, a fake prop, which you can easily dispel if you want to. Unconsciously, you are going around in circles. You observe reality and express your relation to it. The mirror confirms that conceptual reality of yourself in waking life. It is like a closed loop feedback system. Reality is created as a reflection of your thoughts and nature of the thought form itself, largely defined by the reflection in the mirror. The principle of creating your own reality lies in turning the loop in the opposite direction. Look at yourself first, and only then look in the mirror. When a person is attached to the mirror by their relationship to the world, they try to chase the reflection in an attempt to change some aspect of it. Well now, let's try and turn the mirror back on ourselves. First, we will express our relation to the world. The mirror consolidates the context of this relationship in reality, and then we observe it. What do we get as a result? There is no longer a primitive and powerless assertion about the reflection. This is replaced instead by deliberate, purposeful assertion of thought form. Instead of habitually expressing the satisfaction about what you see in the mirror, turn away from it and start creating a picture in your mind of what you would like to see. Only then look in the mirror. This is the way out of the mirror maze. The world stops and then starts to meet you halfway. When you take control of your relationship to reality, outer intention will begin to work. And for outer intention, there is nothing that cannot be realized. All you have to do is switch your attention from the reflection of the image in front of you. In other words, take control of your thoughts. Don't think about the things you don't want and try to avoid them. Think about the things you do want, the things you are striving to achieve. Eight, the pink twins. 
There are many corners of paradise in the world inhabited by pink twins. If you want to go to one of these places, put on your rose-colored glasses and ignore everyone who tells you to remove them. The echoes of paradise rarely penetrate into everyday life. When they do, catch hold of those sun dogs and keep them in your focus. They will start to appear in your life more frequently and they will begin to change your outer world. Interpretation. Have you ever seen rain on a sunny day? What about two rainbows in the sky? Have you ever crossed paths with twins in pink? It is important to understand one thing. Whether you decorate your world in bright rainbow colors of the, or the darkest shades, it depends entirely on your relationship to it. If the majority of your thoughts are related to negative experience, life is going to get worse every single day that goes by. The opposite is also true. If your soul sings in the rain and splashes in the puddles, even when the weather is bad, the layer of your world will be filled with constant celebration. Heaven and hell do not exist somewhere out there in another dimension, but here on earth. There are places like prison, for example, but that is not where you are. That's not your world. And yet it could become your world if you focus your attention on criminal information. Then there are events like accidents, catastrophes, natural disasters. These too become part of your reality if you start internalizing the news Focus your attention deliberately and solely on the things that you want to see in this world. Turn away from everything else. Close your eyes and ears to it. Evil will never disappear from reality altogether, but it could vanish from your layer of the world, your rose-colored glasses. You simply will stop encountering negativity soon enough. 9. The Sigh of Relief Transurfing is pretty much impossible unless you have relatively high energy levels. As a rule, much of our energy goes on a huge gamut of unrealized plans which are weighing us down. Goals activate the energy of intention, but only if the goal is already in the process of being realized and not a project that just hangs in limbo. It is important either to discard a number of your potential plans or to take a step towards implementation. Let yourself go. Give yourself more freedom. Make a list of the limitations that are burdening you and shake them off. When you do list, reserves of intention energy will suddenly be freed and will allow you to move forward. Interpretation. Many people go through life loaded on all sides with the burden of endless responsibility, unfinished business, harsh conditions, unfilled plans, and up team goals. Take a moment to feel what is weighing you down. If you think about it, you will probably find that you can let go of several weights without an ounce of regret. There is no point in constantly dragging them around you if you can't realize them all. For example, I have to be better than everyone else. I'll prove to myself and everyone else what I am worth. All I need is victory. Otherwise, I'll stop having respect for myself. I can't afford to make mistakes. And there are others, like stop smoking, learn a foreign language, and basically turn over a new leaf for my entire life on Monday morning. Anything that is unnecessary, put off into a later date, is endless cargo. An intention must either be realized or discarded because it consumes your energy. Which should be stupid a waste? Is there one big lead weight which you have secretly been putting off? Getting rid of it will lift a huge burden off your shoulder. Imagine how light and relieved you will feel when it's done. Take a moment. Find that one thing and let it go. Number 10. Release. Life will give you everything you intend to have if you are convinced without reservation that is rightfully yours. Your choice is law, subject to unconditional fulfillment. Freedom of choice, the determination to have, is created by the energy of intention. If the excess potential of inner and outer forms consume a significant chunk of your energy, your intention will have no power. In order to let go of the seeming importance of things, be conscious of your actions and aware of the things you attribute to inflated importance and the consequence of doing so. The energy of excess potential is dissipated through action. Run your goal slide in your mind and quietly place one foot in front of the other in the direction of your goal. This is all the action you need to take. Interpretation. How do you stop being afraid? Find a safety net and a fallback position. How do you stop being anxious and worrying so much? Take action. The potentials of anxiety and worry are dissipated through action. I repeat, the potentials of anxiety and worry are dissipated through action. 
How do you stop waiting and wanting? Resign yourself to the possibility of defeat and take action. Dissolve desire and expectation through action. How do you get over the issue of self-worth? Accept your worth as a statement of fact and let go of any action designed to increase it. How do you stop getting so irritated? Play with the pendulum and break its game rules. By responding abnormally, you disturb the pendulum's rhythm, leaving you with nothing. How do you let go of feelings of guilt? Stop justifying yourself. How do you cope with feelings of insult and indignation? Stop fighting and go with the variant flow. What could you do if you find it impossible to let go of feelings and resentment and anger? Allow yourself the shortcoming. Don't pressure yourself to come always on top. And finally, how do you stop yourself from crumbling under the weight of serious problems? Observe the principle of coordinating intention. Instead of battling with excess potential, take action on the grounds of purified intention. Intention is cleansed in the process of movement. 11. Confidence. In order to acquire confidence, you must first of all, let go of the attachment or the need to be confident. Insecurity lies in overestimating the importance of things. I don't need confidence as a crutch because if I have no importance, I have nothing to protect and nothing to gain. I have nothing to fear and nothing to worry about. If nothing is of excess importance to me, my world is pure and transparent. I refuse to fight and let go with the variant space. I am so empty, I cannot be hooked. I have no need to struggle. I quietly go on my own path, taking what is mine along the way. This is not a position of shaky confidence as much as a calm, conscious coordination. Interpretation. Insecurity creates a vicious cycle. The more important your goal, the greater your desire to achieve it, the greater the feeling of insecurity. The more worry and anxiety you feel about something, the quicker your fears will be justified. The battle for self-worth drains your energy. Feelings of guilt can turn a life into a wretched existence of a loser. How do you break out of this tangled maze? You can't. There is no way out. The secret of the maze is that when you stop looking for the way out and let go of importance of things, the walls of the maze collapse by themselves. Stop fighting to prove yourself worth and it will surely be returned to you. Stop justifying yourself to others and you will stop feeling guilty. In the same way, if you reduce the importance you attach to external objects, you will no longer be dominated by their apparent great significance. And finally, Pure coordination is achieved when the heart and the mind are in harmony. To achieve this, listen to the dictates of your heart and stay true to your own beliefs. 12. Balance When you find yourself in balance and harmony with the world around you, your life runs smoothly and pleasantly. You achieve your goals without any particular effort. Yet, when you build walls of excess potential, life becomes a battle with balancing forces. When you are faced with a difficult situation, try and recognize where you have gone over the top, what you have become obsessed with, and to what person or thing you might have attributed excessive significance to. Define your worth and let it go. The wall will come down immediately. The obstacle will remove itself and the problem will be solved on its own accord. Do not try to overcome obstacles. Instead, drop their importance. Interpretation. Everything in life strives towards balance. Wherever there is excess energy potential, balancing forces appear with the purpose of eliminating it. When you perceive something as being excessively significant, you get the opposite of result of what you intended. For example, when you are critical of yourself, you come into conflict with your soul. Balancing forces make you struggle with your shortcomings and try to hide them. As a result, they stand out even more. When you are critical of the world, you confront a large number of pendulums. Balancing forces will aim to cut you down a size and push you away. As well as dropping importance, don't push too hard. Reducing outer importance does not mean to disdain things or underestimate them. It is more about not taking life so seriously. Do not discard things in life, but don't paint them in this veneer either. Accept the world for what it is. Reducing inner importance is nothing at all like being submissive or self-raising. Do not embellish or belittle your own strengths and weaknesses. Just give yourself the luxury of being yourself. 13. The Charismatic Soul What is the secret of charismatic personalities? They throw the negative slides out of their mind and replace them with positive ones. Charm is a result of the mutual love that exists between the heart and the mind. A charming personality experiences a feeling of joy in their soul. 
They enjoy life and bathe in their own love without the slightest hint of narcissism. It is this feeling of joy that other people notice. There are not many of these people in the world, but you can become one of them. You just have to face your heart and love yourself. Step into the path towards your own personal goal. Not only do certain personal qualities change, but the body becomes more attractive too. The face more appealing. And one smile, absolutely dazzling. Interpretation. The secret of attractiveness lies in the unity of the heart and the mind. When a person accepts themselves as they really are, loves themselves, and does what they love doing, well, they radiate an inner light and love their life too. This is precisely what people lack, and this is exactly why we are drawn to charismatic individuals, like moss to a light bulb. On an energetic level, charm represents pure waves of unity of heart and mind. By training your energy, you develop the extraordinary ability to influence others around you and win them over. A person who has an abundance of free energy generates interest and goodwill in others. If you find it difficult to love yourself unconditionally, start doing an energy field workout by affirming the thought form, I am spilling over with energy. The intensity of my energy levels is increasing. I have a powerful energy field and it becomes more powerful every single day. I shine with the energy of love and charm. I am a pure energy source. People sense my energy field and are well disposed towards me. When you notice people genuinely feeling drawn to you, don't forget to tell yourself that this technique is actually working. The rational mind needs to hear it confirmed because it is always in doubt. Can I really be capable of that? Yes, you can. 14. Love yourself. If you don't love yourself, no one else will. And what's more, you'll never be happy. Any conflict between the heart and the mind reflects negatively on a person's appearance and their character. Correspondingly, the shades of your personal world will turn ever darker. Above all, love yourself and only then pay attention to the positive qualities of others. It is important to feel and understand the following. Pendulums force you to change, to turn away from your heart, and to follow the rules that state they are better than you. So do what they do. Be like them. Take your place in the matrix. Be nothing more than a cog in the machine. In reality, you are unique. Go inside yourself, accept yourself as you really are, and assert the right to be right. Only then you will have something that you are proud of and a reason to respect yourself. Interpretation. Once a person has gone the long way down the road of confirming other people's standards, it is difficult for them to suddenly start loving themselves. How can I love myself if I don't even like myself? This is pure excess potential born of inflated inner and outer importance. It is outer importance in which you perceive someone else's standards as the epitome of perfection. Are you not perhaps valuing someone else's qualities too highly? Inner importance is present in forcing yourself to follow other people's standards. Who says that you are any less worthy than they are? It is your self-esteem. Is your self-esteem perhaps a little too low? To love yourself, kick outer importance off the pedestal and give up the idol worship. Who is stopping you from setting your own standards? Let others chase after you. Drop your own inner importance and let yourself go. Give yourself the luxury of having shortcomings and focus your attention on your strengths. 15. I am my goal. If you have been ditched and are suffering from unrequited love or you are looking for love, you must first of all love yourself. If you do not feel that you can love yourself as you are today, and start taking care of yourself and focus on your own personal development. Start going to the gym. Start focusing on your studies. Maybe dress a little bit differently. When you start taking care of yourself, you will find a new sense of importance, of purpose. Looking after yourself becomes your goal if you have not already found one. That is one truly worthy goal and it will bring you success and abundance. You deserve the very best. It is human nature that people are only pleased with themselves when other people happen to be pleased with them and that they can only love themselves when the others love them. And yet, the world is a mirror. How can there be love in the reflection if the image of self does not contain it? The mirror cannot reflect what isn't there. It's a vicious mirror cycle. So, how do we break it? Very simply. Firstly, it is well-known fact that we love people we take care of. So pay attention to yourself. Take care of yourself. Take some more me time. And secondly, love is like a boomerang. 
If you send love out into this world, it will come back to you. You will experience love, including love for yourself, if you shine with love instead of emanating fear, mistrust, and disapproval. If you take the first step, the reflection will meet you halfway. It is basically a feedback chain. I send love out to the world, love is reflected and comes back to me. The world reciprocates. I am love. It follows that I like myself too, and I begin to love myself. 16. Faith. According to your faith, let it be you. This has to be said before and more than once. It is really true. But how do you start believing it? It is useless trying to persuade or convince yourself that this is true. Instead, get down to something more concrete. Shaping your reality according to the chain surfing principles and visualizing your goal slide. Put the principles into practice and you will see what happens. Outer intention will open a door onto the world in which the impossible becomes possible. When the mind is faced with the fact, it will include the inconceivable into the worldview and allow a miracle to happen. When you see that transurfing actually works, you will not need to have faith. You will have knowledge instead. Interpretation. Transurfing gives you a map of the territory and the rules of the game. It is up to you what you decide to do with them. You are the king or queen of your own personal world. Do not succumb to other people's influence. Believe in yourself. Don't rely on other people's decisions. You know better than anyone else what needs to happen now. Even now that you have the knowledge, you will not become immune to making mistakes. True success grows out of the ruins of your own failure. Most prominent figures have been through a lot. It is just that their areas of life have been glossed over. So if you have suffered a failure, rejoice. You are on your path to success. Sometimes you will feel as if circumstances are stacked against you. And yet, how can you really know exactly what path will lead you to achieving your goal? The guardians of ancient knowledge have revealed transurfing not to try and make you believe in the reality of metaphysics, but to inspire hope. Where there is faith, there is always room for doubt. We need hope so that we can start taking action. Begin to take action and you will see how things that previously seem inconceivable begin to manifest into physical reality. When hope has done its work, you will gain access. You will gain awareness. Then you will say to yourself, I don't wish, I don't believe, I don't hope, I intend and I know. 17. Feelings of guilt. The sense of guilt always generates scenarios related to punishment without you even realizing it. This is typical of the usual worldview. Every crime is always punished. As soon as you notice the slightest trace of guilt, get rid of that rubbish immediately. Do not let it spoil your life. Live true to your own convictions and you will never experience guilt. No one will dare to judge you if you do not consider yourself guilty. When you are free of guilt, you will never find yourself in a situation in which someone tries to threaten you with violence. No guilt, no punishment. Interpretation. If you are struggling to shift the guilt complex, it is one of the most important things to stop justifying yourself. This is one of those cases where treating the symptoms of the disease successfully deals with the cause. You do not have to convince anyone, including yourself, that you are obligated. Simply observe your everyday actions. This requires a certain level of awareness. If previously you had the habit of apologizing for even the slightest thing, adopt a different habit. Explain your actions only what is absolutely necessary. Stop feeling as though you owe something to someone. If the feelings of obligation continue, do not show it outwardly. When they stop getting the former knee-jerk reaction, the manipulators will suddenly back off. At the same time, the heart and the mind will gradually get used to this new sensation. If you are not trying to justify yourself, then things are obviously as they should be. And so your guilt simply cannot exist. As a result, the need for redemption will appear less and less often. Therefore, via the feedback chain, the outer form will gradually tidy up the inner content. The feeling of guilt will disappear, and with it, all of its associated problems. 18. Self-worth. When a person tries to make themselves feel more important because they feel inferior in some way, the opposite happens. The harder they try to emphasize their worth, the less significant they actually become, and vice versa. When a person is not worried about their worth, their sense of worth is unconditional. Our sense of self-worth is the very cunning type of excess potential. Balancing forces will do anything they can to wobble you off your pedestal. When you let go of your own worth, you start to acquire it. 
At the same time, be careful never to bruise someone else's sense of self-worth. Make it a personal taboo. If you do, you will save yourself a lot of problems that will seem to come out of nowhere. Interpretation. The need to strengthen your position and emphasize your inner qualities is an illusion. It's the same as chasing the reflection in the vicious mirror circle. So how do you convince yourself that you are worthy and you no longer need to prove it? There is one feedback chain by which the effect removes the cause. You have to redirect your intention consciously. Rather than trying to put yourself forward in the most favorable light, stop trying to make any attempt to increase your self-worth. When a person isn't trying to make themselves appear more important, although almost everyone does it, people intuitively sense that their value goes up without the person even saying anything, as if by magic you start getting treated with greater favor and respect. As a result, the heart and the mind are gradually instilled with the conviction that you are worth something. At a certain point, the mirror stops and turns in the opposite direction and moves towards you. As a result, your self-esteem improves as if you never had an inferiority complex at all. 19. The Master's Credo Always be yourself. Don't try and change yourself under any circumstances. Live life according to your own credo. When you contradict your own credo, or worse, when you simply don't have one, you undermine yourself as an individual and everything in your life goes awry. When the image is distorted, the reflection in the mirror is distorted too. It is important to bring your thoughts and your actions down to the same denominator. Be true to yourself. Then the dual mirror will be free of any crooked distortion. You are the master of your own reality. You have no reason to feel shame or guilt or fear. Remember, you are not alone. The force is with you and your world takes care of you. Interpretation. When you live true to your own credo, the heart and the mind come in unison. This means that you take the actions you consider necessary without bothering social opinion. Never change yourself under any circumstances. If you do feel pushed into doing something which your soul actively protests against, everything will end up going to pop. Conversely, when you live according to your own credo, even if some of your actions seem to contradict common sense, everything will turn out right in the end. There is no need to analyze exactly how your credo is strengthening out reality. It is simply the lack of distortion in the image which makes the reflection normal again. Unity of heart and mind produces a clear image, which instantly materializes in the world mirror. All your true desires will be fulfilled. It is universal law. 20. Your true path. It is not worth setting out on a path that has no heart. This path leads to a complete dissonance between the heart and the mind. You will experience a feeling of uneasiness in your gut, uncertainty, and frustration. On the one hand, it looks as if you are doing everything right and yet, on the other hand, your subconscious tells you that the things are not right at all. When a path has heart, you will feel it through and through. When you go your own way, you have the incomparable feeling that everything will turn out just as you want it to be. It gives you this calm, charismatic confidence. Go your own way, on which the soul rejoices and your mind rubs its hands in glee. If you intend to find your true path, there is no doubt that you will find it. Interpretation When you start living for yourself and doing what you enjoy most, everything in your world will simply catch up to comply with your path. It is very simple. When heart and mind are in unity, everything else automatically falls into place. When they are not in harmony, for example, when the heart is asking for something and the mind is afraid, it is important to act cautiously and prudently. Listen to your heart, but remember that you live in the material world, which is not always capable of adapting to your desires instantly. Of course, it is not hard to walk away from a job you hate, but if you are afraid of being left without an income, well, do not expect a miracle. If you use the slice technique, you will be able to find any kind of work you want, be it in another city, in another country even. But without reliable support at this stage, you will be too anxious to practice the technique calmly. Never burn your bridges. 21. The Master's Verdict Your entire life, people have been telling you how to behave, what to read, what to strive for. Well now, give yourself the lawful right to establish your own canons. It is for you to decide what is right for you and what isn't, because you are the only one shaping your personal worldview. You have the right to determine as true something that others consider false. So as long as it does not harm anyone, when you assume the privilege of passing your own verdict, you are saying true to your credo. The right to pass the master's verdict becomes freedom from oppressive circumstances, from everything that puts a cloud over your life and throws obstacles into your true path. It will help you acquire a certain calm confidence. Interpretation. 
there are as many opinions in life as there are people. Some call it black, others call it white. Who should you believe? As you will remember, the world is a mirror. It agrees with everyone who dares pass judgment. But you are not a mirror. Either you are the kind of person who accepts other people's verdicts, or you are the master who arrives at their own verdict. In this case, which truth do you consider the ultimate truth? Which side do you support? Now you can decide on your own truth. My decision is this, because I am the master of my own reality, and it will work because you have the variant space and the dual mirror at your disposal. Everything you need to manifest your vision into physical reality. There is just one condition. You must have the boldness to exercise your right. If you indulge in self-doubt, your verdict will lose its power and you will be transformed from the lawmaker into the accused. You never take the right action when you doubt yourself. It is not so much a matter of how rightly you think or behave, it is a matter of how confident you are in being right. You mustn't allow the master's will to dictate the quality of your mind. A verdict only has power when the heart and mind are one. Those who fail to listen to their heart never master. They make mistakes. 22. Declaring Intention In order to shape reality effectively, you have to try and control your thoughts and not let them run away from you. It could be a bit of a strain at first, but with time it will become a habit. Don't do anything just for the sake of it, mindlessly floating about with uncontrolled thinking. State your declaration of intention. Concentrate on your goals. This does not mean that you have to be permanently on maximum alert. Let your thoughts drift as much as they want to, but be conscious that is happening. If my mind is wandering, it is because I am allowing it. Then, when you need to, return to a state of concentration equally as mindfully. Interpretation Usually the thought mixer works by itself. Ideas emerge and fade uncontrollably. The thoughts jump from one theme to the next. The mind kicks just like a baby. So what's the lesson in all this? If you want to create your own reality quickly and effectively, train yourself to say the thought forms to yourself. From time to time, throughout the day, repeating the narrative for what you want to achieve. It is a good idea to keep your main goal constantly in the back of your mind. By speaking your declaration out loud, you set the course of your intention. For example, adopt the habit of spending a few minutes each day affirming the thought. Every day, affirm the following thought. My brain is fitted with a self-development program. It is constantly developing and perfecting itself. New connections are being made between the left and right hemispheres. Both hemispheres work so sharply, coherently, and synchronously. I have an incredible mind. Incredible ideas come to me. I think outside the box. My brain's reserve are contributing to this work. My brain is 90% active. I have a fine intellect and I am becoming more powerful every day. I solve problems easily. My awareness is becoming clear. Everything is transparent and simple. I understand things clearly and express myself clearly. You can create similar affirmations on your own and repeat them at a set time, after you shower or after you're done with your workout. Imagine it and it will become into being. 23. Resolve to act. If there is something you need or want, do not waste energy procrastinating over it. Just take what is yours as if you have received the card from the post office asking you to collect the parcel. You have to intend rather than deliver it. If what you want right now is a bus, a parking spot, a purchase, a document, an exam, an interview, a meeting, anything, do not think about it. Go out and get it. Let go of the worrying thoughts. But is it possible? How will I do it? Where will I find it? Ditch all anxiety, hope, and desire until all that is left is a calm confidence. Focus on what it feels like when you finally get it, without all these conditions or reasoning about it. For example, I don't think about whether I'll be on time for the bus, whether the bus will come or how long I'll have to wait. I simply walk to the bus stop knowing that the bus will arrive at any moment. Let this state accompany you everywhere. Interpretation Usually when you experience a momentary desire, an analyzer switches on in the brain and starts to ask, but will it work? You have to give up this harm and pull habit. Desires are not fulfilled, dreams do not come true, but pure intention manifests. It is not the desire itself that leads to the manifestation, but the affirmation of what is desired. Intention is not about intensity or zeal, it is about quiet focus and resolve. If you doubt or fear, the world, like any other mirror, will reflect your emotional state. And as a result, nothing will come of what you wanted. Whatever you do, do with confidence. There is always a possibility of failure. However, your chances of success are greatly increased when you aren't wavering. What do you have to lose by letting go of doubt? If it works out, then great. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. 
Support can be found in the principle of coordinating intention. If you turn your thoughts concerning a seemingly negative event into a positive one, then that is exactly what will happen. Think of consciously controlling your resolve to act as if you are directly controlling your measure of good luck. 24. Resolve to have. When there is not a single shadow of a doubt, desire, or fear in your mind, just the quiet resolve to have, then the impossible becomes possible. You could pass an exam without knowing the subject, sail through the most grueling of interviews, secure a super lucrative contract, win a hopeless case, and charm people you never dreamed would be in your lake. Let go of the desire to achieve your goal. Be dispassionate like a samurai who lives as if his body has already died. Be reconciled with the idea of the feat, but in your thoughts, imagine that the goal is already in the bag. Cast hope aside. Hope is the lot and salvation of the weak. Have nothing but the willingness to receive it. That is what you want, right? So what's the problem? Yours it will be. Interpretation. Desire is when you focus your attention on the goal. Internal intention is when you focus your attention on the process of progressing towards your goal. Outer intention is when you focus your attention on how the goal is manifesting on its own accord. Inner intention helps you achieve your goals without the physical world. Outer intention selects the goal from within the variant space. Inner intention is aimed directly at influencing the world around us. Whereas outer intention allows the goal to be realized in accordance with the intention. Unconditional, unreserved belief in success is what triggers the workings of outer intention. Unconditional, unreserved belief in success is what triggers the workings of outer intention. Usually the mind desires and the soul protests, or the soul longs for something and the mind won't bring it into play. And as a result, the image that stands in front of the world mirror is blurred. When the soul and the mind are unified, a clear image is generated from the variant space via the mirror. Mean to have what you imagine. You have nothing to lose. Your options are limited only by the clarity of your own intention. 25. World Cleanup If you are experiencing feelings of emptiness, have a good cleanup at work or your home. Rearrange your furniture. Get rid of accumulated rubbish and old things you no longer need. Then rearrange your possessions that you need and value tastefully with care. You will feel spurred energy and spark joy. Cast away negative thoughts just as strictly so they don't sour your world views. Fear, anxiety, doubt, negative expectations, dissatisfaction, judgment, resentment, feelings of guilt. Clear all this rubbish off your personal planet. Constructive activity is the best cure for depression. The results are never long in coming. When you are creating something, no matter what it is, the soul gains a lost sense of life. Have a good, tidy cleanup. Taking out the rubbish is a particularly effective remedy for depression. In the same way, clean up your entire worldview. Everyone creates the layer of the world they live in with the thoughts and actions. Your mindset and the way of living plays a fundamental role. Your world will become as you imagine it to be. If you perceive the world as an aggressive, hostile place, then that is exactly what will show up for you. If you believe that the benefits of this world are only achieved by putting a huge amount of effort, you will constantly find yourself having to work really hard. If you believe that wealth and success are satellites of the elite, you will always find yourself standing at the back of the queue. The more negativity you have swimming around your mind, the more miserable your reality will be. By getting rid of negative stuff, you will be surprised to see your reality increasingly taking on a warmer, cozier shade. 26. Way of Success Perhaps sometimes you feel inspired or on top of the world and then the daily grind brings you back down. How do you hang on to that feeling that life is a song full of happiness, a celebration? First and foremost, you have to remember how that feels. Keep that sparkle of the feeling of celebration alive and cherish it. Notice your life changing for the better. Grasp at any straw of joy. Look for auspicious signs at everything. And never forget, not even for a moment, that you are following course and transurfing, consciously going after your own dreams, and that means shaping your own destiny. This alone is enough to give you peace of mind, confidence, and joy, which means that you are the magical song of happiness in your life. When feeling wonderful becomes a habit, you will find yourself permanently on the crest of waves of success. Be happy and grateful that everything you have in this moment is exactly what it is. There is no empty call to be happy by default. Sometimes when circumstances stack up against you, it is very difficult to be content. But from a purely practical point of view, there is simply no benefit in expressing dissatisfaction. Don't take bad news to heart. If you don't let it into your heart, you'll keep it out of your life. Close the door on bad news and open it up to good news. 
It is really important to take note of the smallest sign of positive change and nurture it carefully. When your relationship with yourself and the world around you is good, a field of harmonious vibration surrounds you and everything inside of it goes well. A positive attitude always leads to creativity and success. 27. Chasing the reflection. How does a person usually respond when they see something manifesting they do not want in their life? The everyday mind tries without success to manipulate the reflection in the mirror, when in fact it is the image itself that must be changed. The image represents the focus and quality of our thoughts. Imagine how ridiculous it looks to see a person standing in front of a mirror trying to catch hold of its reflection. You have to tear your eyes away from the mirror and let go of the short-sighted intention to turn the world in the direction you want it to go. Purposefully send your thought forms into the world and adapt a positive mindset. Everything will turn out just the way you want it to be. Interpretation. Make an inventory of your thoughts and eliminate every occurrence with the particle not. Dissatisfaction, reluctance, rejection, disapproval, hatred, lack of belief in your own success, and so on. Take all that rubbish, shove it in a sack, and chuck it in the rubbish heap. Your thoughts should be focused only on what you like and what you want. Only then will the good stuff be reflected in the mirror. On the other hand, be prepared for it to take some time before you begin to observe positive change in your personal worldview, or for the opposite to happen with all sorts of unpleasantness creeping in. And what of it? These are just temporary inconveniences with moving to a new level of reality. As you know, the mirror works with the delay factor. You have to hold the frame no matter what. Quietly hold the pause for a bit while nothing is happening. It's just like in the fairy tale when they say, don't look back or you will turn to stone. I don't know what is going on in the mirror, but I know this. The mirror has no choice. Sooner or later, it will reflect the image I am creating in my thoughts. As soon as I stand my ground and I am not tempted to look back, the mirror will create my reality. Everything will be as I want it to be. 28. Creating an image. In order for a thought form to become rooted in physical reality, it has to be reproduced systematically. You might not have thought that the process could be so mundane, but it is ordinary, routine worth. Nothing more. Mostly, people just don't have the patience to keep at it. They experience a surge of enthusiasm when they first lit up with an idea, but as a rule, their excitement quickly fades. For a goal slide to manifest in physical reality, you have to run it in your thoughts for a fairly long time. There is no such thing as miracles. It comes down to concrete work involved in shaping reality, to continually think about what you want. As long as the rational mind is not fighting against the dictates of the heart, the unfathomable power of outer intention will emerge and materialize the sector of the variant space that most closely responds to the quality of your thoughts. When the soul and the mind are unified, the image takes on shape and manifests instantly. The world literally agrees with your thoughts about it. So why is it that as a rule, our worst expectations are justified and our hopes and dreams never come true? In life, mostly happens as our mind doubts whatever the soul strives towards and refuses to bring it into play. Or it is the other way around. The mind makes a compelling case for its own project, but the heart is indifferent. When the unity between the heart and mind is lost, the image becomes blurred and appears to split. The heart wants one thing, the mind insists on another. When this happens, you can fully agree on one thing, resentment and fear. So what could be done? The matter involved in material realization is inert like resin. A fortress can only be taken by long siege. If you really want to achieve your goal, visualize the slide of your thoughts regularly. 29. World, give yourself the myth. When you want something from the world, don't pressure the world to give it to you. What else can the mirror reflect but a capricious kid in standing in front of it, jumping up and down, crying, I want it, give it to me. Yes, you want it. Yes, you demand it. The mirror reflects fact, nothing more, nothing less. The principle is very simple. If you want the reflection in the world mirror to meet you halfway, you have to take the first step. Let go of intention to receive and replace it with the intention to give, and you will receive the very thing you let go of in the first place. I repeat, let go of intention to receive and replace it with the intention to give, and you will receive the thing that you wanted in the first place. Interpretation. Do you want a certain person to acknowledge and respect you? Don't demand it. Show this person that you respect yourself and make them feel that they are important in your eyes. Do you feel in need of compassion and gratitude? Don't search for it. Take genuine care of someone else and actively help them with their problems. Do you want people to like you? A pair of beautiful eyes won't do. 
show warmth towards someone and they will automatically perceive you as being lovable. Do you need someone's help and support? Find someone to help. You will become more important and that person, not wanting to be less important than you, won't remain in your debt. Do you want to experience mutual love? Let go of possessiveness and dependent relationships. You will experience mutual love if you are prepared to love without receiving anything in return. This kind of love is extremely rare. No one will be able to resist it. In all of these situations, you are certain to experience the very thing you let go of. 30. Here world, have me. As a rule, people tend to be entirely consumed by thoughts of what they want from others without trying to understand what others want from them. By shifting your attention to desires and motives of others, you easily get what you want for yourself. All you have to do is work out what your partner's intentions are. Whenever you need something from a person to gain their favor or encourage them to do something, ask yourself this question. What does this person really want? What motivates them and what are they interested in? Direct your actions toward realizing your partner's intention and they will willingly reward you for the same. In one way or another, all the problems we face with other people result from internal conflicts. Motivated by their own interests, people are inevitably trying to get something from someone else while that person is thinking down entirely different lines. Focus instead on what's important to them. Use other people's internal intention to achieve your own goals. A person's sense of self-worth lies at the very foundation of their internal intention. Beyond life itself, nothing is more important to a person than his or own self-worth. Shift your attention from yourself to others. Stop playing the game of increasing your own self-worth and play the game of making others feel greater self-worth. To attract attention to yourself, it is enough to show interest in others. Don't talk to people about what interests you. Talk to them about things that interest them. Your personal strengths and weaknesses are what interests your partner least. What they are most interested in is the feeling of self-worth they experience when they are talking to you. How can you motivate someone to do something? Present the task to them in the light of how it will increase their sense of self-worth and they'll be wanting to do it. 31. The Oyster Effect People tend to gladly express an attitude of discontent when they feel they have good cause to, and yet respond almost indifferently when something good happens, almost as if they took it for granted. Overall, people are not conscious of this. They are reacting like an oyster, out of habit. Now step up a notch from an oyster. Wake up and make use of the advantage of consciously expressing your relationship to life. I choose the colors of my own personal reality with intention. Irrespective of the circumstances, I attune myself to a major key. I do this consciously rather than reacting in a primitive way to external irritants. By controlling the pattern of your thoughts, you intentionally control reality. If you don't, reality will control your thoughts. The tendency to negativity generates all kinds of icky features in the mirror and then fills your personal worldview in gloomy colors. When a person is depressed, the storm clouds gather all the faster in the mirror reflection. As soon as a person takes an aggressive stance, the world responds by bristling its fur. You may have noticed that when you argue with someone, sharply expressing your position, some other unpleasant events seem to appear. The more irritated you get, the more trouble sinks its claws into you, the more everything around you starts getting under your skin. What matters is what you were thinking about not how you are thinking about it. Whether you like the reflection or not, it is the subject of your thoughts. Leave me alone, or I've had enough of this. The only thing that matters is the content of your thoughts. As a result, the reflection in the mirror is dominated with things that you are thinking about and things you don't want. When you take control of your emotions that keep you so attached to the reflection, you free yourself from the mirror. There is no point in trying to suppress your emotions. Your feelings just are a symptom of the relationship of what's going on. You have to change your attitude, how you perceive and respond to reality. When you have freed yourself from attachment to the mirror, then you will acquire the ability to create the reflection you want to see. 32. The Master's Intention Using your willpower, you declare any event or circumstance favorable and to your advantage. This affirmation is not merely based on hope or in good will of the world, which takes care of you because it loves you. It is not derived from trust or confidence, which circumstances could cause it to crumble nor is it born of the arrogance of blind faith in your own success. It is not even based on optimism. It is the master's intention. You are creating the individual layer of your world and you are the master of your own personal reality. You are a master of reality if you can move yourself at the same time as leaving the world to move by itself. Interpretation. 
The master is not so much an active figure as a witness. Rather than leading, you allow. That is what makes the master's intention different. When you look in the mirror, don't try to move the reflection. Move the image instead. Your attitude and the focus of your thoughts. In other words, move yourself rather than trying to grab hold of the reflection. If you interpret intention as a determination to demand from the world whatever you think it owes you, you will be left with nothing. If you ask the world for what you want, you will be still left with nothing. All you have to do is place your order and allow the world to process it for you. You stop the world from working on your order because you demand, petition, fear, or doubt. Therefore, the world also demands, asks, fears, and doubts. It reflects your relationship to life impeccably. After all, it is a mirror. You have to really feel this truth. Let the world go. Allow it to be a comfortable place for you right now. This fragile, fleeting feeling will pass quickly. So you have to hold on to it. Imagine for a moment an incredible thing. Your hostile, problematic, difficult, and uncomfortable world has suddenly transformed into a joyous, comfortable life. You give the permission to be that way. It is up to you to decide. The secret to this power lies in your releasing your grip. The pendulum rule. The pendulum rule reads, do as I do, which means change yourself and copy the stereotype. In the effort to live up to someone else's standards of success, people lose themselves and become deeply unhappy because keeping up with all the standards is simply impossible. So don't do it. Don't be afraid of breaking the pendulum's rule. Set your own standards. Those who violate the pendulum's rule either become leaders or renegades. Some break through to the stars and others turn to outcasts. The difference between the two is that the former act as if they have the total right to break the pendulum's rule and the latter cast doubt whether they have the right to. Claim the right to break the rule. The pendulum's rule is what establishes norms of behavior and thinking, the standards of normality. People do not understand that they are being offered a surrogate of success. No one individual success can serve as a model for others to replicate. Only people who dare to break the rules find their own path in life, achieve true success. When you follow other people's example, you are forever doomed to chase the setting sun. Standards of success are a mirage. People do not realize or do not want to realize that the pendulum is trapping them in a web of illusion. The illusion is often sweeter, more convenient, and more clear than the uncertainty of reality. On the other hand, if you do occupy a certain position within a structure, bear in mind that you cannot just mindlessly antagonize it. It is not a question of freeing ourselves from pendulums altogether. That would be hardly possible. The most important thing to avoid is becoming a puppet and act with conscious awareness so you can use the new structure in your own interest. Strive to set new rules for yourself without breaking the system's existing rules. The Transurfing Rule Discard the pendulum's rule, do as I do, and replace it with the Transurfing Rule. Giving yourself permission to be yourself means accepting yourself, warts and all. Allowing others to be themselves means withdrawing from expectation you project onto them. The universal rule gives yourself the chance to find inner freedom and wave goodbye to all the sorts of problems that may have plagued your life. Interpretation You do not have to worry too much about how the transurfing rule works. Just follow the rule. Whenever you are faced with a difficult situation, ask yourself, how can I act in this situation without breaking the transurfing rule? This will allow you to solve a whole range of issues, find your inner strength, your personal credo, Get rid of the complexes of guilt and inferiority, feel confident, avoid all conflicts and disappointments, unravel intricate knots of interpersonal conflict, and finally, find your own way in life. The transurfing rule is the dignity of kings. Day 35. Dropping importance. All unbalanced emotions and reactions like indignation, dissatisfaction, irritation, anxiety, worry, dependence, Confusion, despair, fear, pity, dependence, oversensitivity, idolization, admiration, delight, disappointment, pride, conceit, contempt, repulsion, and so on, are all the result of overstating the importance of things. Pendulums hook you up to these strings and turn you into a puppet. Dropping importance does not mean battling with your feelings and try to suppress them. It means addressing the cause, the underlying attitude. You have to reach the point where you can see the importance leads up to nothing but trouble. Then, deliberately reduce the importance to things you attribute to things. Interpretation Problems as such do not actually exist. All that really exists is an artificially inflated evaluation 
of the importance of things. When a person becomes aware that the problems are illusionary, they can intentionally reduce the importance of everything that continuously troubles them. No, do not play down their meaning, just reduce their importance. Watch the game from a distance, soberly and impartially. By reducing importance, you will instantly return to a state of balance and the pendulums won't be able to control you. In the free space you free up, there will be nothing for them to hook up. This does not mean that you have to have a heart of stone. Emotions are born of attitude and so is our attitude which should be changed. Feelings and emotions are just an effect. Importance is the only cause. Let's say that in my family there has been a birth, a death, a wedding or some other significant event. Would the event be important to me? No. Would I be indifferent? Likewise, no. Do you get the difference? I would not publicize the event into a problem or drive myself and others around me mad because of it. A strong deviation towards outer importance breeds emphatics and deviation towards inner importance, idiots. 36. Ending the battle. The world is a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. When you are unhappy with the world, it turns away from you. When you battle with the world, it battles with you too. When you stop battling, the world meets you halfway. If you simply give yourself permission to have what you envision, outer intention will find a way of giving it to you. Then, one fine day, something will happen that others will call a miracle. Are you desperate to achieve your goal? If so, stop wanting and receive it anyway. Just think about it. Taking what is yours and taking it quietly, without insisting or making demands in the manner of, so I want this. So what? I shall have it. Pendulum impose a totally different kind of script. They force you to fight and achieve your goal as if the only way of achieving it is to declare war on yourself and the rest of the world. They constantly bombard you with the idea that because you are less than perfect, you will never achieve your goal unless you change who you really are. Once you have changed yourself, then you have to join the battle for your place under the sun. This script pursues one goal only to drain your energy and drive you into a cell in the matrix. By fighting with yourself, you give your energy away to the matrix. By battling with the world, you do exactly the same thing. No one can force you to fight but you. will have no other option if you are filled with inner and outer importance. If you don't feel able to give yourself permission to take and have right now, you could put it off until later. However, putting it off until later leaves you feeling that every moment of your life is just a preparation for some better future. People are always dissatisfied with the present and console themselves with the hope that improvements are on the cards. Does that sound like it? With this kind of attitude, the future will never come. It will always be hovering somewhere just ahead of you, like trying to catch up with the setting sun. Give yourself permission to have right here and right now. 37. Coordinating Intention If you attend to look at things that seem negative in a positive light, then that is exactly what they will be. Remember, however bad things are now, a lovely surprise will come your way on the condition that you maintain coordination in the present moment. When faced with any test in life, tell yourself this. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, even better. You know that your world takes care of you, and if something has not worked out, it means that you have avoided other problems you cannot even foresee yet. With this lighthearted move, you can calmly go on a date with the destiny you are creating for yourself. From this moment on, whatever happens, remember, everything will be just as it should be. A person's life is made up of a chain of cause and effect relationships, just like any other movement of matter. In the variant space, the effect is always located close to its cause, just as one is derived from the other. So nearby sectors of the variant space come together in a lifeline. The, every event on a lifeline has two branches, one leading in a favorable direction and the other in an unfavorable direction. Every time you face any kind of event in your life, you choose how to respond. If you think of the event as something positive, then you step into the favorable branch of the lifeline. However, the tendency towards negativity forces you to express your discontent and choose the unfavorable branch. As soon as something makes you angry, another unpleasant situation follows. Does that sound like something you know? 
This is why troubles always come in threes. The chain of bad luck, however, does not follow on from the first misfortune. It follows on from your relationship to that event. The pattern is created by the choice you make when you stand at the fork in the road. The coordination of intention principle equips you so you can always take the fortunate life run. 38. My world cares. Make this a firm affirmation. My world takes care of me. Whatever circumstances you encounter, even the most mundane, keep repeating this affirmation to yourself. Whatever happens, good or bad, if you meet with a stroke of luck, do not forget to affirm that the world really is looking after you. State this affirmation in connection with every small detail. When you find circumstances disheartening, still affirm that everything is turning out as it should be. Your world knows how to look after you much better than you do. How you look in a mirror is how things will be. Adding gold to the mirror's reflection, as the Venetian masters used to do, makes everything in the reflection acquire warmer shades. Because the world is a mirror, you could tune it in the same way by creating your own amalgamation. For example, you could choose, my world takes care of me, as the dominant idea. Take it to be an axia. Deliberately adjust your perception of the world to align with this dominant idea, and then you will see how the world responds. Despite its simplicity, the amalgamation technique is much more powerful than you might expect. If you have the patience to make this technique a habit, after some time, you will literally be amazed at how much real influence your thoughts are having on the environment. 39. Against the flow. Try to observe, at least for one day, how your mind paddles against the current. Someone offers you something and you turn it down. People try to tell you something but you dismiss it. Someone expresses their opinion and you argue with them. Someone is trying to do something in their own way but you direct them onto the true path. Someone offers you a solution but you object. You expect one thing, but you get another, and you express your discontent. Someone gets in your way, and you are enraged. Something runs counter to your script, and you launch a direct attack on the flow to get back on track. Change your tactic. Shift the center of gravity from control to observation. There is no point in thrashing your arms about in the water. Get out of your life's way. Let it go with the flow and you will be relieved at just how much easier everything is. The human mind works like a computer. It tries to calculate all the future moves and draw up a plan of action. The mind rarely manages to find the optimal solution, since the task involves too many unknowns in which the situation is constantly changing as you go along. Yet still, it stubbornly insists on its own script. In other words, it rose against the current. As a result, a huge amount of energy is wasted and the number of challenges and obstacles increases. The mind tries to control the flow itself rather than how it moves with the flow. I'll repeat, the mind tries to control the flow itself rather than how it moves with the flow. This is one of the main causes of the problems and issues people find themselves having to deal with. Rather than trying to be in control, simply try to observe. Don't be too quick to dismiss, object, argue, insist, intervene, manage, or criticize. Give the situation a chance to resolve itself before you actively intervene or resist. Let go of having to be in control and you will end up having more control over a situation than you ever have before. The only things worth controlling are the levels of the inner and outer importance. 40. With the variance flow. Try to keep in balance with the outside world and trust the unfolding of the variance flow. Let go. Stop being the participant. Become the objective observer. Make it a rule that you always do things in the simplest way possible. When you have to solve a problem, ask yourself, what is the simplest way of doing this? If something does not go according to plan, let your grip go and accept the matter as an unforeseen alteration to your script. If someone offers you something, don't be too quick to refuse it. If someone gives you a piece of advice, try mulling it over. When you hear a different opinion, don't be in too much of a hurry to enter into a debate. If you think someone is going about something in the wrong way, let them. People take their own initiative. Allow them to realize their own intentions. The variance flow is a gift for the mind. The mind is always busy developing its plan of future action. 
The mind is certain that it will weigh up everything and find the best way forward. Yet a plan already exists in the variant space. The information structure is arranged in a chain of cause and effect relationships. These relationships generate the variance flow, which arranges events simply and effectively. People are used to having to overcome obstacles and rub against the current. Searching for complex solutions to simple problems becomes a habit. Nature does the opposite, always following the path of least resistance, wasting no energy. For example, why does it often happen that after searching the entire region for a particular item, you eventually find it right under your nose? If you stay away from trouble and stop pushing against the variance flow, the solutions will come on their own accord. And what's more, it's going to be the ideal solution. 41. The Habit of Remembering In order to find your way out of a difficult situation, you have to first recall that it originated as a consequence of amplified importance. A non-lucid dream in which the events of the dream occur irrespectively of your will only has total control over you because you are unaware of the fact that you were dreaming. It is exactly the same in waking life. Until you become aware of the fact that you have allowed your mind to become totally immersed in a problem, circumstances will continue to control you. Stop. Shake off the delusion and remember that reality is a lucid dream, one you can control. Once you have woken up, practice transurfing in the waking dream. When you are floundering in inflated inner and outer importance, the most difficult thing is to return to awareness in the right moment. For this purpose, you need the keeper, the inner observer who keeps a constant eye on the level of awareness. Of course, it is hard to keep yourself in hand when you feel like going ballistic. Pendulums are like vampires. They use a kind of anesthesia, your habit of falling asleep, when you react negatively to an irritant. Even now, after having read these lines, it may only be a matter of minutes before you get distracted and take an unwanted phone call in an irritable tone of voice. Try to wake up several times during the day. Look around with a clear head and understand that it is all a dream and that you have been sleeping, not consciously aware of what you've been doing. The habit of remembering is developed through constant practice until becoming consciously aware becomes a habit. Pendulums will do everything they can to get you. Don't be dismayed though. Overall, this will manifest itself as a minor problem. Do not give in. Learn to remember and you will be victorious. You'll see. 42. Smashing Stereotypes If someone tries to convince you that you must slave away for the benefit of someone or something, do not believe them. If they try to prove that nothing in this world is achieved except through hard work, don't listen to them. If someone tries to force you into a crucial battle for your place under the sun, do not listen to them. If someone tries to put you in your place, do not listen to them. If someone tries to draw you into a sect or a society which desperately needs your contribution to a common cause, do not listen to them. If someone tries to tell you that you were born into poverty and therefore must live the rest of your life the same way, don't believe them. If someone insists that your opinions are limited, do not believe them. From the point of view of common sense, everything in transurfing is turned on its head. The same could be said of common sense from the point of view of transurfing. If you do not want to live like everyone else, if you do not want to be content with middling achievements, if you want to aspire to live one life to the fullest, then you are a wanderer. In transurfing, the wanderer is not one chosen by fate. Fate is the one chosen by the wanderer. Everything you want in life will be yours and you could tumble the monolith common sense. People falsely assume that the rational worldview is an immutable law. It is not immutable and it is a very thin law that you can get around. Unexplained miracles happen more often than you think. So why not let a miracle happen in your own love? All you have to do is give yourself permission to have what your soul desires. If you tear away the tangled web of prejudice and limitation which pendulums weave around you and you genuinely believe that you are worthy of your dreams and can give yourself permission to have one thing you want with all your heart, then life will give it to you. 43. Visualizing the process. Whatever you do, your efficiency will be increased manifold. If rather than doing it well, you consciously and enthusiastically admire your work, constantly asserting how excellent it is. This is extremely important. The principle here is this. I do a wonderful job. Today, I'm doing everything better than I did yesterday, and tomorrow, I will do it even better than today. 
When you keep your goal slide in your mind, all your external circumstances will work towards the goal, even if it does not appear to be the case. If you visualize the process as well, the layer of your personal world will rush toward your dream at lightning speeds. Let's say, for example, that you're working on some kind of project, creating something. Whilst you're working afterwards, when you finished for the day, imagine that the object of your creativity is becoming even more perfect. Perhaps today, you added a few more details, and tomorrow you will add several new touches. Imagine your creation becoming gradually transformed. You are constantly adding new elements to it and watching it transform into a masterpiece before your very eyes. You are happy, enthralled by the creative process. Your brainchild grows with you. It is not just about contemplating your piece. You have to imagine the process of its birth and growth towards perfection. Create and marvel at the same time. Do not be shy to call yourself a genius. Affirm the thought form and ideas that they are more brilliant than ever and they will come to you. The same thing applies when you're working on your body. Nurture it as a mother nurtures her child. Imagine that your body is gradually acquiring perfect form. Look after it, train it, and imagine your muscles developing, here and there becoming more toned. You will be surprised at how effectively this perfect affirmation is realized. 44. Slides As a rule, people only take actions within the limits of physical reality guided by so-called common sense. This is not so particularly effective. You now have a huge advantage. Once you start working with the metaphysical properties of reality, you can materialize whatever you intend. In order for a thought form to manifest in material reality, you have to reproduce it systematically, running the goal slide through your mind. The picture of what you want your life to look like, as if you have already achieved it. Unlike useless daydreaming that only occurs occasionally, this is real work. Do the work and you will see results. When you practice the visualization technique, the layer of your world shifts into variance space to the sector in which your goal has been achieved. Do not think about how this happens. Your thoughts should be focused exclusively on the goal slide. In its own time, outer intention will open its doors and real opportunity, the likes of which you could never have foreseen and would have not appeared if you had not worked on the goal slide, will come true. When you see that the goal is getting closer, your fears and doubts will vanish. Do not watch the slide from the outside like a film in the cinema. Live it, at least virtually. Pretend it is already happening. Imagine all sorts of new details. Do not let working with the slide become a burden or a chore. Just take pleasure in envisioning the scene in which you have already achieved your goal. Of course, if visualization is not very distinct, do not try too hard to make it clear. Work on everything in their own way, however it comes. Most importantly, if you work on your slide systematically and enthusiastically, you can consider your goal already in the bag. 45. Path to your goal. Drop the importance of your goal. Let go of any feelings of longing so that you are left with only the resolve to have. You should be moving towards your goal in the same way that you go to the post box to pick up your post. The only things that could spoil everything on the path towards your goal are obsessive commitment, trying too hard, and fear of the feat. Run the goal slide in your mind without including any particular script. You already have it. Don't think about achieving the goal. If you focus on the goal as if you have already achieved it, after some time, outer intention will open the door of opportunity to you, and then the means to the end will present itself. If you think your goal is unachievable, you will spoil the whole thing with doubt and heavy thoughts about your potential failure. So how do you believe in the impossible enough for it to become possible? You don't. There is no way you could persuade, convince, or force yourself to believe. Put these petty worries to one side and get down to it. Run the goal slide in your thoughts and do not forget to put one foot in front of the other as you move towards your goal. Don't worry that for now, your goal is hidden from view, somewhere beyond the clouds. Of course it is difficult for you to imagine how it could be yours, but that is something you don't have to worry about. All you have to do is make your order, leave the rest to the waiter. When the mind sees the doors opening, your doubts will dissolve. Many people who have achieved astounding success confess that they would never have believed themselves capable of it. Just one piece of advice. Don't place your entire goal on one card only. Find an alternative route, a safety net, or a fallback position. Don't slam past doors shut and don't burn your bridges prematurely. 46. Doors. Your door is the path that will lead you to your goal. Keep running your goal slide through your mind and sooner or later, outer intention will reveal opportunities to you. Your doors. 
we get tired, suffer huge energy loss, or exhaust yourself on the path to your goal, you've gone through a door that isn't yours. I am not saying that it will be easy, but if you feel spiritually uplifted and inspired, then you can be sure that what you're doing is your door. Everything that you do easily, gracefully, and with enthusiasm will have meaning and value. Any small thing you do that is characteristic of your personality, even if it's totally valueless in the context of set stereotypes, could be the key to your door. Try projecting your characteristics, frivolous, childlike quality onto grown-up doors. Pendulums have taught people to do what they have to do and to accept their lot. People have become so accustomed to that which has to be done that their true inclinations of their souls are pushed away into the furthest corner of their conscious mind for better times ahead. A life comes to an end and the better times never come. Happiness always looms somewhere in the future. The false stereotype asserts that if in this future is to be your present, it has to be fought for, earned, and finally achieved. People often stop doing what they love for financial reasons. Their activities are divided into hobbies and real work, which gives them an income. In reality, you can earn money from a hobby if that is your goal. In this world, everything that is done with soul is very expensive. Yet the false stereotype of forced necessity prevents people from completely devoting themselves to their goal. They will slog their guts out for some other geezer for most of their life because it is supposedly what they have to do to exist. The soul only gets the crumbs left over after the main working day is done. So for whom does a person live? For some old geezer? 47. Codependent Relationships If you think that the world is against you, think. To what object or item have you attached excessively important significance to? If you attract everything you hate and you are haunted that everything around you irritates you and that the most undesirable things happen to you, then it is because you are gripping the world by the throat and it is resisting, trying to break free. The more you insist on your own desires and claims, the stronger the magnet that attracts the opposite. Relax your grip. Let the world do whatever it likes. Give yourself permission to be yourself and let others be different. Don't compare yourself to anyone. Don't get too attached to anything. Accept things with grace and let them go with grace. When any quality is attributed excessive importance, excess potential is created which distorts the surrounding energy environment. Access potential is not necessarily a problem as long as the distorted evaluation exists relative only to itself. As soon as the artificially inflated value of one object is positioned in comparative relationship to another, polarization arises which functions as the magnet for trouble. Dependent relationships are created between people when they start comparing themselves to one another and placing conditions like, if you are this, then I am that. This is when trouble creeps into our life so intrusively, as if on purpose. You could see, for example, how totally incompatible individuals marry, as if they were trying to punish one another. In any team, there will always be that one person you particularly find irritating. Murphy's Law, or what you would call Saad's Law, is the same principle at work. All conflict is based on comparison and opposition. Draw your own conclusions. 48. The Search for Love there is no need to go searching for love. Love will find you. To meet your other half, systematically you run a slide in which you imagine your life together with some abstract individual who represents your ideal. At a certain point, a door will open and he or she will appear. From then on, it will be up to you. You have to go through the door. Take the first step. Letting go of blind pride or any sort of prejudice. Take this step simply and sincerely without masquerading. Always be yourself. Don't try and change who you really are under any circumstances. Stay true to your own credo. Then the dual mirror will stay free of crooked distortion. A romantic slide should always contain an abstract person who understands your ideal. You should only include a person you already know in the slide in the extreme case that no other means of finding requited love is open to you. In principle, you can run a slide in which you are both together and love each other. This is a script of a kind and consequently, it will exist in the variant space, but the other person concerned is not a passive object. They are a living being who is also actively realizing their intention. You might have some success with the slide, but it won't be very effective because no living person is stationary in the variant space. They are always hurrying away. Whilst you are busy sliding the other person, they will quickly find themselves a more grounded partner. 
What's more, the soul of a person who is being slighted will feel it happening and they don't even like it. They may subconsciously begin to experience a feeling of aversion towards you. The best way of going about things is not to take the risk at all and arm yourself with the frailing principle. Interpersonal relationships are the one case where you are forced to communicate with another living being rather than hanging about dreaming with your head in the clouds. Extinguishing a Pendulum 49 Be prepared for the pendulums to provoke you. When you feel yourself in an unpleasant situation or you have received bad news, you are naturally thrown off balance. In the normal situation, you ought to be worried, be afraid, run away, lose heart or express your dissatisfaction or irritation. Now, do the opposite. Offer an abnormal response. Smash the script and try something else. Replace fear with confidence. Despondency with enthusiasm. Indignation with indifference. And irritation with joy. The essence of the pendulum game is to pull you off balance. You have to break the rules of the game intentionally. Do whatever you like. Just as long it is not what people expect. And victory will be yours. Pendulums feed on human energy. For example, when something makes you angry, you express your fury and give your energy away to the pendulum. The pendulums provoke everything, which could potentially evoke strong, negative emotions. When you come across some unfortunate circumstance and react by getting irritated, there is a continuation and the negative situation develops in the same spirit or new unpleasant situations arise. That is how the pendulum swings. You swing the pendulum yourself when you accept the game imposed on you. Behave differently. Either don't react at all or respond in the opposite way altogether and you will still the pendulum sway. Your task is to introduce a new game, your own game, by reacting to it in an abnormal manner. The sole principle here lies in the fact that you swing with a different frequency to the resonant frequency. A dissociation is set up between you and the pendulum which causes the pendulum to stop swinging in relation to your energy and as a result it will leave you alone. 50. The Pendulum Flop if you let thoughts on what you don't like bug you, that is exactly what will show up in your life. In order to let go of what it is that you don't want, you first have to accept it. By accept, I don't mean let it in, so much so as acknowledging its right to exist and then let it pass indifferently. Accept and let it go. In other words, consider the fact of it and the wave it could bind. As the pendulum's first attack, always respond by agreeing and then diplomatically step back and obtrusively Direct the pendulum's momentum in a direction that suits you. Learn not to get hooked and to ignore the things that irritate you and they will disappear from your world. When the pendulum has no way of hooking you, it disappears into the void. Pendulums are the lord of dreams. When a person is susceptible to the provocation, it is as if they fall asleep and become fully immersed in the imposed game. Their mind is zombified by what is happening. If something irritates you or evokes a sharp sense of aversion, you might as well be walking around with a hook in your head. Catching onto your hook, the pendulum will instantly set about finding a suitable irritant and not just one. You will dangle from the hook for as long as the irritation has no end. In order to pull the hook out of your mind, you have to change your relationship towards the irritant and divert its attention. Accept the situation, transform the tragedy into a comedy, and focus on doing something else. Changing your relationship to something does not mean bottling up your emotions. Emotions stuffed deep inside are very evil which builds up and inevitably explodes and goes about to feed the pendulums. First, express your emotions and then consciously correct your relationship to them. There is no point in fighting a pendulum. They simply have to be ignored. 51. Incomprehensible Infinity Why does transurfing work? Who put everything into the variant space? No one created the variant space. It has always existed. It is human nature to believe that everything in this world was made by someone or something, that it has a tangible beginning and an end. Yet there are certain questions in this world to which the answers lie beyond the limits of the human mind. For the mind is nothing more than a logic machine, albeit a machine with the ability to abstract thought. Transurfing does not explain the structure of the world. It offers a utilitarian model which enables us to understand why it is possible for a person to create their own reality and how to go about it. It's the same as if driving a car without understanding how it's assembled. Everyone could drive a car. You don't need to know how it's assembled. All scientists have ever tried to do throughout human history is explain how the world works. This process will continue for eternity. 
every existing model will be replaced by every newer versions of how the world works. If you stand in front of one mirror while holding another mirror, you will understand how there could be an infinite number of models, which explains how the universe works. When one manifestation of reality is taken as the formation for a model, what you get is a separate version, a small piece of the mirror. When you stand in front of the main mirror of the world holding that smaller piece, you see a new facet of the world reflected. When you take one of the manifestations of this aspect, you again get a separate reality. And again, out of yet another tiny mirror, a new one will appear, reflected in the image of the mirror before that. So what is the true nature of the world? Try, if you can, to imagine it as being two identical mirrors placed just opposite one another. Both mirrors reflect the image of the mirror placed in the front of them. In both mirrors, nothing is reflected in an infinite number of times. This is the black infinity of images where nothing is a reflection of nothing. Are any of the concepts available to the rational mind adequate to describe that scene? Hardly. 52. Gatekeeper to Eternity The variant space contains everything and everything you desire with your heart and mind is yours. You should know, however, that at the threshold of eternity there stands a gatekeeper, an absolute law which guards everything that is to be accessed beyond it. The unremitting gatekeeper only admits those who have the audacity to exercise the right of the master. Your past is this verdict. I am capable and worthy because I have decided it is so. I don't want and I don't hope. I intend. Claim this right and the gatekeeper will open up the doors to eternity. What makes a showbiz star different than the girl next door? A luminary of signs different to the timid student. And the chosen few different from the rank and file? The answer is one simple step. There are those who have been bold enough to claim their right and there are others who are procrastinating to do so. We don't believe they are capable or worthy. The firm conviction holds in the minds of the timid that the chosen ones exist because all the rest have chosen them on account of their having some exceptional ability. In reality, this is a false stereotype. The chosen ones choose themselves it is only after taking this step and because of it that others notice. Claim your right to be the chosen one. Say to yourself, from this moment on, I choose myself. It is not that you have the right because you are worthy or capable. You have it, the right, as a matter of course. The variant space contains everything including something that is intended for you personally. Your verdict that you have this right, that is your pass towards eternity. It sanctions the privilege to create your own reality. 53. Shaping Your Own Destiny When a person takes control into their own hands, their life is no longer dependent on circumstance. The little ship of life can be steered in any direction away from fate that is allegedly predetermined for you. It is all very simple. Life is like a river. If you row the boat yourself, you could choose which direction in which you travel to. If you simply give yourself up to the current, you will have no choice but to float in the direction of the current carries you. If you want karma, you will have karma. When you think that your fate depends on some unforgiving circumstances or the mistakes of your past lives, you bring that corresponding variant space into your future reality. The will is yours, for you are a child of God. If you want to be the master, then this too is in your power. The dual mirror will agree with everything you say. Suppose someone sets a goal, which from a normal point of view seems difficult to achieve or entirely impossible. The person strives towards their goal with all their heart, but the skeptical mind drops it and keeps asking the same old question. But how? In accordance with the principle of transurfing, at a stage where the means of achieving a goal are not yet clear, one has to take the unconventional step of forgetting about the means and concentrating on the end goal, as if it has already been achieved. When you roll the goal slide in your mind, the layer of your personal world shifts in the variant space to the sector in which the goal is realized. The shift is subtle, but real. Your mind can doubt it as much as it wants. All that matters is that you diligently run the mental picture of the goal slide in your head. It is like being on a nighttime flight. You can barely tell that the plane is moving, but the engine is working, so you know it must be moving. In the same way, the mind runs the visualization of your goal, the engine, while outside the lifting force, outer intention, pulls the layer of the world, the airplane, towards its destination. The boat wheel of intention is in your hands. Everything will turn out the way that you want it to. 54. Spiritual Laziness When a person believes in the predetermination of their fate or takes a dream very seriously, they unwittingly create a thought form which can be manifested as a program. 
realization only occurs because the person believes in all that nonsense. We always get what we believe in. But it is childly silly and naive to turn to any old man or woman who is supposedly capable of predicting the future rather than creating your own destiny at your own discretion. You are the true master of your fate if you intend it to be so. Do not sacrifice your fate to the mirror makers. Only the infantile believe in horoscopes, those for whom life is a non-lucid dream. If you intend to shape your own destiny, there will be no point in enlisting the services of a mirror maker. For who are astrologers, interpreters, and predictors if not mirror makers? After all, they are not just offering harmless advice, but they are becoming your destiny, a piece of the mirror in which you will have to peer into. You receive a sort of affirmation of the future, which sits in your unconscious mind and programs how fate will unfold. Money aside, do you really think that you can get a piece of the future just like that? Peering into the book of fate is not without consequences, and the payment for this product is always the same. You take it with you and integrate it into your life, whether you want it or not. Showing interest in a forecast is like being given a mirror and asking the mirror maker whether or not you may smile in it or not. Yet, you already have a mirror, the layer of your world from which you can create anything that you would like. With your own mirror, you are free. Whatever you wish, you can use the will of the master to transform defeat into victory. And that is how it will be. Who gives a damn about predictions? 55. The Master's Mindset People paint the layer of their personal world in the darkest shades with their own negative attitude. The mirror simply states the content of the attitude and ignores your slant on it. It does not matter how you are thinking about it. What matters is that you are thinking about it in the first place. Whether you like the reflection or not, you are still thinking about it. Only the theme of the thought has weight. From this moment on, make it a rule to keep your thought patterns and mindset under control. Whatever happens, turn it into a positive. Fix your attention and ultimately have what you want. With time, you will create a very comfortable personal reality. Prepare yourself for a magnificent cascade of pleasing events. Usually a person's intentions are totally absorbed by the negative experiences. They have become preoccupied with the things that they don't like. They think about the things they don't want to do and the things they don't care about. The mirror makes no allowances for a person's desire or reluctance. It simply accurately conveys the content of the image. No more, no less. It is ridiculous, really. People are endlessly dragging around them with the things they do not like. That is why the poor get poor and the rich get richer. They are all looking in the mirror of the world, each in their own way, staring at the guise of their own personal reality. This kind of reality sucks you in like a swamp. The old woman queuing for her pension, the exhausted woman with heavy bags on a packed bus, and the sick patient hobbling from one medical institution to the next. All their thoughts totally immersed in their own grime reality. Meanwhile, someone else is enjoying life. The ocean, yachts, travel, luxury hotels, an expensive restaurant, everything the heart desires. In every case, irrespective of the nature of the situation, people make precisely the same statement. Such is life. More precisely, our life is as if we have imagined our existence to be. The mirror confirms and consequently consolidates the content of our thought forms. 56. Dissatisfaction with the world. If you really want to improve your life, replace negativity with positive dominance. For example, my world always chooses the best for me. I go with the variance flow and the world meets me halfway. I create the layer of the world with my own intention and the world protects me. My world guards me against all problems. My world makes sure that life is easy and comfortable. I place an order and my world delivers it. I may not know how to take care of myself, but my world does. My intention is manifesting in physical reality. Everything is leading towards it and everything is as it should be. Remember, either you control reality or reality controls you. Why is it that with time, all colors fade and quiet sincerity is replaced with anxious concerns? It is because the number of problems we face increases with age. No, it's because as a person matures, they tend to adopt a more negative attitude. Discontent is a more powerful emotion than the feeling of satisfaction that comes with comfort and tranquility. Despite everything, not realizing they are happy in the moment. People demand more and more out of life. The demands grow and the child becomes more spoiled and ungrateful. Naturally, the world cannot keep up with the brat's growing demands and it starts to express that attitude towards the world. You're bad. You don't give me what I want. You don't care about me. The full force and the unity of discontent produces that 
in reality. The world is just a mirror and has no choice but throw up its hands and sadly reply, well, have it your way. If this is what you want, I will give it to you. 57. Inferiority When a person begins to realize that they don't fit conventional standards, they begin to feel inadequate. But in comparison to who? Ask yourself, do you want to be like everyone else or do you want to be yourself? You will start to feel like you are being yourself if you focus on developing your finer qualities. Any inferiority you feel will be balanced out by your inherent merits. Charm can compensate for a lack of beauty. Self-confidence can compensate for physical defects. The ability to listen can replace the inability to speak freely. There is just one piece of advice I will give to anyone who suffers from being shy. Guard this quality for the treasure that it really is. Shyness will always have a certain mysterious charm as long as you don't play it up to the luxury of being too cool. Feelings of inferiority are based on comparison. I'm not only unattractive outwardly, I have no talent or particular ability. I'm not intelligent or witty and I don't know how to communicate with people. I'm not worthy of anything. No, it's much more serious than that. The fact is, I'm less than they are. This type of thinking is an example of a dependent relationship in its purest form. It creates a type of polarization. They are good, I am bad. Polarization generates the wind of balancing forces, which causes a person to try and raise their artificially understated value in any way possible. Therefore, the person begins to have unnaturally emphasizing even more the aspect of self they are trying to hide. Battling this inferiority complex can create far more unpleasant consequences than the complex itself. There is only one way to eliminate a complex like that. Stop comparing yourself to others and switch the focus of your attention from your shortcomings to your strengths. Create a positive slide in which your strengths are in such cool bloom that your shortcomings fade into the background. Live in this virtual slide and soon it will become your reality. 58. Self-sufficiency. The fact remains that you have colossal potential even if you cannot see it. You are capable of doing anything. It is just that no one has told you that yet. Accept this as a fundamental truth that the fact that your soul can do anything if you give yourself permission to do so. Stop looking for truth and sources outside of yourself. Take a good look inside and there will always be answers to your question. Looking inside is not an abstraction. Simply ask yourself a question and dare to answer it yourself. By connecting to the corresponding sector of the variant space, you are quite capable of making a discovery, building something new or creating a masterpiece. Stop looking at established authorities. They turn to the same source in their own time. Now it is your turn. Do you enjoy the work of geniuses of art, science, business, sport, variety, and cinema? You could become one of them. The reason you enjoy works of a genius is that they are born of the soul. Others will enjoy your creation too, but only if it originates in your own unique creation, your own unique soul. Everything mediocre or ordinary is created by the mind. Creations of the mind, just like the mind itself, are never unique. Only the soul is unique. You possess a real treasure. Any brilliant creation you create can only be born from your soul. Let your mind create it. You just have to stop being distracted by other people's experiences and stereotypical standards. Create your own. When faced with literally any kind of problem, shape the question and give yourself time to find the answer. You will see the answer will come in and of itself. It already exists in the variant space. Your task is to hold the intention of coming up with it on your own. There is just one requirement. In order to attune yourself to the necessary sector in the variant space, you have to have certain basic skills and knowledge in that area. Beyond that, just be very attentive to the voice in your heart, which is trying to communicate with you in the language of intuition. 59. Decision Making When you consider how to act in any given situation, only your mind is working. It analyzes the advantages and disadvantages, builds a concept that is sound and persuasive, and at the same time, takes account of the opinions of others. As a rule, it does not take into account the premonitions of the heart. In this regard, the mind may as well be fast asleep. So let it sleep and don't bother it until it has come to a conclusion. Once the decision is made, stop listening to anyone else. Wake up and scrutinize how you felt when you made that decision. How comfortable does your soul feel in this moment? will reveal how the heart responds to the mind's decision. Every time you have to make a decision, listen first to the voice of reason and then listen to the feeling in your soul. As soon as the mind has made a decision, the soul will respond either positively or negatively. In the case of the latter, you will experience a small wave of something, 
a sneaking suspicion in your soul. When you make the decision, you will have experienced the briefest inkling of something. At that moment, though, the mind will have already been so absorbed in, in its analysis that it will not have bothered you about their feelings. Now, though, remember, what was that initial fleeting feeling? If it is a sinking feeling in the background of optimistic reasoning, the soul clearly has said no. If your soul is saying no and your mind is saying yes, boldly refuse it if you can. The soul always knows exactly what she wants. There is one simple, reliable algorithm for determining a heartfelt no. If you have to convince yourself and persuade others to say yes, then the soul is really saying no. Remember, when your soul does say yes to something, you won't have to persuade yourself. 60. The Rustle of the Morning Stars When you're faced with a problem you don't know exactly what the solution is, trust your intuition. If you rely on premonitions, you are bound to make mistakes, but you will make infinitely more mistakes by only listening to the voice of reason. When you have to make a decision, no one knows what to do better than your soul. It can often be difficult to understand what exactly your soul is trying to tell you, but you could tell unambiguously whether your soul approves of the decision or not. That wave of uneasiness you feel in response to a decision made by the rational mind is a reliable criteria for the truth. The mind thinks with the help of well-established rules, symbols, words, concept, diagram, rules, and so on. The soul does not use these categories. She does not think or speak. She feels and she knows. Moreover, the mind is constantly busy with its own chatter. It believes that everything can be rationally explained and saved. When the mind slacks off, intuitive feelings and knowledge can break through consciousness. The mind gets distracted in this moment, you sense the feelings and knowledge that you are the realm of the soul. This is the rustling of the morning stars, the voice of no words, reflection without thinking, and sound without volume. You understand something, but only vaguely. You do not argue, you feel intuitively. You simply know. The soul has access to information fields and you can find the answers to many questions as well as protect yourself from taking erroneous or even dangerous steps if you just listen to her voice. For example, if you feel a certain uncharacteristic anxiety before boarding a plane, it would be wise not to board a plane. Likewise, when you first meet someone of the opposite sex and you have to persuade yourself that he or she is right for you, it is highly unlikely that that is the future relationship that will last. 61. Borrowed Goals when you're deciding on your own goal, ask yourself, do I really want this with all my soul or do I just want it? If you have to convince yourself, then it is a borrowed goal. If the goal is truly yours, you won't have to sell it to yourself. The movement towards borrowed goals will always fold the joy in an illusionary future. When you're moving towards your own goal, you are happy in the moment. Borrowed goals have always been brutal to the self, a compulsion, an obligation. A borrowed goal always takes the guise of fashion and prestige seduces with its superiority and forces you to prove itself to everyone. Borrowed goals are imposed on you by others and serve only to improve someone else's welfare. Seek your own goal. Borrowed goals evoke this uneasy feeling in the soul. False goals tend to be very attractive. Your mind will paint the positive values of the goal in the brightest colors and yet if, if you feel in any way burdened by the goal, despite its attractiveness, it is paramount that you be honest with yourself. Naturally, the mind does not want to. As far as it is concerned, everything is wonderful and perfect. So where does the somber shade come from? When considering your goal, forget about its potential prestige, how difficult it is to achieve, or even how to achieve it. Focus your attention solely on the sense that you already have it in your core. Imagine that you have already achieved your goal and everything is behind you. Do you feel good or not? Don't confuse the inhibitions of the scared ego with an uneasy gut reaction. Those sneaky suspicions always are a heavy feeling of oppression and burden, which you are vaguely beginning to sense lurking beyond the optimistic reasoning of the mind. Slides can often help overcome spiritual inhibition, but spiritual discomfort? Never. 62. Your personal goal. Every human being carries a precious treasure inside of them, the unique quality of the soul. Every soul has its own goal, and when a person is on the path of their personal goal, they find true happiness. Happiness is not somewhere ahead of you. Either you have it here and now, or you do not have it at all. The secret to true success is to free yourself from pendulums and choose your own path. Ask yourself this question. What is your soul's passion? What would turn your life into an ongoing celebration? Don't think about restrictions or limitations. Don't fold back. Indulge. Order whatever you want. 
If the goal is yours, the soul will sing and you will think about it and the mind will rub its hands with glee. The human soul can only vaguely guess what he or she wants. The mind has to help her choose her goal. But the mind tries in its usual manner to find the goal by means of logic. This is a mistake. The mind's task is not to search for the goal, but to recognize it in time. In the right place at the right time, the soul will divine its own goal and you will know. The main thing is to give the soul the chance to meet its goal. You have to expand your horizons, visit places you have never seen before, watch things you have never seen before, allow new information in, and break the mundane cycle of everyday life. Beyond that, stay away and attentive to the voice of the heart. Give yourself an indefinite window of time. Do not force yourself into fixed timeliness or don't turn searching for your goal into a chore. Simply hold this thought. I am looking for the thing that will turn my life into a constant celebration. The goal will come as a revelation. When you come across information that lights up your soul and your mind takes great pleasure in pondering it from all sides, then you can assume that you have found that very thing you are looking for, the thing your soul desires. 63. The Boat Wheel of Intention If you want to achieve your goal, you have to turn desire into firm intention. Dreams don't come true. Stop longing for your goal. If you hold the intention, it is already yours. Longing is the fear of failure. I want it so much, but I don't have the time and energy. I'm afraid it won't work out. Why are you so afraid? Because you are not thinking about the goal so much as how to achieve it. Stop thinking about how. Your task is to think about your goal and run this goal slide in your mind. On the path towards your goal, things won't go as expected or it might not be the thing that happens at all. Don't let that discourage you. No matter how events unfold, keep your course in the direct line with your goal. Let this be your motto. I don't want, I don't hope, I intend. I'll repeat that. Let this be your motto. I don't want, I don't hope, I intend. Your position in the variant space relative to your goal is as if you were a boat on the open ocean. In order to reach land, you have to sail in the northerly direction. The direction in which the compass needle is pointing represents the focus of your train of thought. All the time, when you envision a mental picture of you approaching the shore and stepping onto dry land, your needle will point where it should be. All you have to do is paddle and concentrate on arriving. Just this and nothing else. But the impatient mind begins to fidget and bother the rower. Are we heading in the right direction? We'll be there much longer? What if we don't have the strength? What if we're going the wrong direction? We should be going in the opposite direction entirely. As a result, the compass needle begins to waver and the boat constantly shifts its course. The mind doubts and worries because it cannot perceive movement in the variant space. It is used to having the situation under control. The mind will only calm down if you give it a task so that it can understand what it is doing. So tell your mind not to row up the boat and to keep the wheel firmly fixed on course. Controlling your chain of thought, this is what the mind should be working on. 64. The Soul's Sail Everyone has their own personal goal on the path to which they reveal all their talents and find true happiness. If a person is unaware of their uniqueness, their divine power from the creator, and falls into non-lucid dreaming, the pendulums will put the dreamer into constant circulation, impose false goals, and show them their place in the matrix, so that they become nothing more than a cog in the system. When a person aims for borrowed goals, their life can feel as if they were serving a prison sentence. On the path towards your personal goal, you will find true happiness in life. Your goal will transform your life into a constant celebration. Achieving your goal will bring with it fulfillment of all your other desires. And what is more, the results will surpass your highest expectation. Search for your goal and you will find it. Is it really necessary to search for a personal goal? In truth, most people don't even think about it. They just live their life and that's it. Although they are not so much living as serving time. One day is very much like another. Routine work, the same faces, streets, walls, and range of distractions. The permanent burden of cares and responsibility, only celebrating certain days. Yet there are other people whose lives are bright and colorful like the carnival. For these lucky ones, they are not any work days as such. At work, they work, as if they were playing and every day is a Catherine wheel of interesting events, happy experiences and meanings. Why is it like that for them and not for me? Because these chosen ones sought their own path. You can count these kinds of people on one finger on one hand. The rest are prisoners of the matrix, rank and file components of the system, unaware that they are renouncing their right to freedom of choice in the process. God's uniquely powerful children have allowed pendulums to turn their lives into a non-lucid dream. Now the system decides for them what they need and want, how they should live their life and what they should strive for. 65. Pessimism 
When a person looks at their reflection in the mirror and sees traits they don't like, they focus their attention on them and express their negative relationship towards them in an automatic response. As a result, everything becomes worse than it previously was. The mere reflection of reality slowly darkens and pales in comparison with the thought form. Their world loses its former freshness of color and becomes increasingly bleak and miserable. Stop picking at the things that irritate you and they will cease to annoy you. Stop looking for problems. Search for solutions. Finally, stop whining. Once you have changed your relationship to life, you will start experiencing that solid feeling that everything is unfolding as it should be and things are only getting better. Everything will turn out as it should. The tendency to express pessimistic expectation is quite unattractive. The pessimist derives a pervasive satisfaction from wallowing in the sorry lot. Everything is so bad. It simply couldn't get any worse. It serves me right. It serves them right too. The loser tends to state their inevitable position and with the same fatal doom, life is totally dark and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. That is exactly who he becomes. People with this kind of attitude dislike their fate so much that they put all their mental energy into complaining about it and lamenting their lot. Yet, what else could the mirror possibly reflect in the image opposed to it but discontent? As the image, I am unhappy, I don't want this, so the reflection, yes, you are unhappy, and no, you don't want this. The mirror reflects the fact, nothing more, nothing less. And because this is so, the number of reasons to be dissatisfied with life increases, which in turn, worsens the person's relationship to the world. Therefore, the former favorable transforms into a mere grouch, deprived by their own fate and constantly complaining about how much the world owes them. It is sad to see. People don't understand that they spoil things themselves. 66. Support If things are hard for you in the moment, you can always find support inside yourself when you wake up and look at the problem, how it arose. The danger lies in not in the problem itself, but in your relationship to it. Immersing yourself in the importance of your problem, you give it energy and the pendulum starts to form. You have to realize that in any problematic situation, the pendulum will want you either to prepare yourself for a fight or throw in the towel and give in to its despondency. You must not do either. So if you have no support and you've lost your iron rod of confidence, what can you do? Confidence will come when you wake up and acknowledge how the game is played. You will chuckle wryly to yourself. Ah, it's you, Pendulum. You're not going to hook me this time. You are no longer a puppet. You are free. The world can start to look intimidating and hostile to a person who is not familiar with the rules of the game. Surging feelings of loneliness and depression can cause a person to fall asleep and give in to the will of circumstance. When faced with a complex problem or unfortunate news, people give their emotions to the pendulum and they feel anxious, lacking in energy and burdened by the pressure of the whole situation. Either they shift into a state of readiness for combat or they feel hopeless and give up. Both states are abnormal and lead to stress and depression. In order to find support, people chase the situation down by smoking cigarettes and drugs, drinking alcohol, or turning to other similar kinds of emotional props. As a result, they get caught in the bondage of under pendulums. All you have to do is wake up and observe the game as a member of the audience would without expecting anything. You will be able to see all the hidden rocks lying at the seabed as easily as if the sea had suddenly evaporated. Then you will be able to come to understand to a position of power inside yourself. Understanding what is happening around you counts for a lot. Only this knowledge is enough to restore the quiet, firm belief in oneself. For lack of confidence usually results from fear of the unknown. Knowing all this, you could turn your life into a clear waking dream and gain over any situation in which you find yourself. All you have to do is wake up. 67. Refining the script. Look at everything around you with the eyes of the observer. Imagine you are taking part in the play and at the same time acting dispassionately, taking note of any movement of your surroundings. Do not insist in keeping your own script. Let the world go as it goes with the variant flow. This does not mean that you have to agree with everything that it does totally. It is one thing to close your eyes and surrender to the powerful pull of the current, and quite another to go with the flow, deliberately and consciously. You will know when to pull in the reins and when to give it some slack. Let the world go and observe its movement. Keep an eye on it. Like a wise mentor who leaves the youth for freedom of choice, only occasionally giving a nudge in the right direction. You will notice how the world begins to center around you. People feel uncomfortable when they are led blindfolded. The mind finds it difficult to accept that sometimes nothing happens or that events don't come out as planned. The mind is designed like a cybernetic automation. 
If the work algorithm is broken, a red light comes on. So-called common sense can really be very primitive. It not only sets a stereotypical course of action, it also insists upon it being carried out. In the majority of events, there is no need to take action and it is quite enough to be flexible and gently follow what is happening. As long as you don't disturb it, the variance flow will direct the course of events down a preferable stream. You have to turn the short-sighted intention of the mind in the opposite direction. Let it dynamically adjust its script to include the unexpected. This kind of task would be new to the mind, but it is the only effective way of shedding the role of the kitten playing in front of the man. When you consciously abandon control of the situation, you end up gaining real control instead. 68. Box for the soul. Your soul does not come into contact with the material world in order to suffer. Yet, it is of benefit to the pendulums that the battle for the place in the sun is the norm. Your soul came into this world as a celebration. Give yourself the permission to see life in this way. Only you can decide whether you spend your entire life working for the benefit of a foreign pendulum or living for yourself, for your own pleasure. If you choose the celebration, then you need to break free from the pendulums that restrain you and find your own personal goal, your personal door. Unite your mind and your heart and you will have everything your heart desires, literally and figuratively. Allow yourself the luxury of being worthy of the best. We cannot change the world and so we have to learn to accept that things do not depend on us. Many limitations and conventions literally lock the soul in a box. Captured by pendulums, the mind becomes the soul's jailer, preventing it from realizing its potential. A person is forced to behave as the world of pendulums wants it to be, expressing dissatisfaction, getting irritated, competing and fighting. Be aware that this is simply the pendulum's game. The reason it is a game and not a battle is that essentially pendulums are like clay dummies. In this game, your potential is only limited by your intention. The level of importance you attribute to things and your own level of awareness can limit the pendulum's potential. When importance and attachment are at zero, the pendulums fall through with emptiness. You will draw strength from realization that you understand the rules of the game. As soon as you notice a pendulum trying to hook you and pull you off balance, smile to yourself and assertively drop your importance level. Then you will feel your strength and understand that you have decided the game script. When you win the pendulum's game, you acquire the freedom of choice. 69. Idolization. When a person creates their own myths, sooner or later they are always dispelled. If you don't want to experience disappointment, observe the three don't rule. Whatever happens, don't increase your levels of attributed importance. Nothing is quite as important as you wish it to be. Don't make an idol of anyone. They are much more earthbound than they look. Don't sugarcoat reality. Everything really is prosaic. Strive always to evaluate reality in a somber manner. When you think that there is something somewhere which does not exist, excessive potential appears, creating a distortion in the surrounding energy field. Balancing forces try to eliminate this, and in the majority of cases, their action is aimed at debunking the myth. For example, a young, romantic, dreamy lad imagines the object of his love to be an angel of beauty. In reality, it turns out that she is a very down-earth young lady who loves her fun and is not remotely inclined to share the same tragic dreaming of the starry-eyed youth. Or a woman paints a mental portrait of her ideal husband. The firmer her belief that he should be exactly as she pictured him to be, the more powerful the excessive potential that is created. Only a character with completely the opposite qualities can discharge it. And vice versa, if a woman really detests drunkenness, she will fall into the trap of finding someone who is an alcoholic or an outright slob. People attract things they are actively disliking and vice versa. If they begin to idolize something excessively, balancing forces will force them into a harsh reality. 70. Unconditional love. If someone has fallen in love with you, consider it a miracle, even if the feeling is not mutual. Don't cold shoulder her. Treat the love shown to you with high regard and treat it very gently. If you think about it, being loved is a miracle. What if this is the last person who will ever love you? Treasure your love for another in the same way. Don't let it turn into a dependent relationship. Offering unconditional love, love without demands, is the only way of evoking similar feelings in another. Let go of the desire to receive or commandeer. Give your love just for the sake of it, without expecting anything in return, and perhaps a miracle will happen and you will be loved in return. Imagine yourself standing in front of the mirror of the world. If your image is one of love, then the reflection will be one and the same. If your image contains the desire for mutual affection, you can forget about seeing mutual love in the reflection. The mirror will simply reflect your vain attempts to be someone else's favorite. When love turns into a dependent relationship, 
excessive potential is created which brings about a certain kind of energetic pressure drop. Dependent relationships are carried by setting conditions along the lines of, if you don't want to marry me, you obviously don't love me. If you love me, you are good. If you don't love me, you are bad. The greater the desire to possess, to love back, the greater the effect of balancing forces will to do anything to spite you. Love, not tied to conditions, is free from possession. Avoid dependent relationship and generate true positive energy. Only unconditional love is capable of working the miracle of mutual love. 71. Polar Comparisons Constantly comparing yourself to others leads to an inferiority complex in the case that you undervalue your worth and a superiority complex in which you overestimate your worth. Both are equally monstrous. Be aware that pendulums force you to compare yourself to certain standards because it is in their advantage that everyone walk abreast in a single formation. Turn your non-normality into self-sufficiency. Claim the right not to be the same as everyone else. Smash the pendulum rule. Be like me and do as I do. Always observe the train surfing rule instead. Give yourself permission to be you and allow others to be different. When you fall out of line, the pendulum will follow you as if you were the new normal. Don't imagine that everyone around you attributes as much significance to your shortcomings and strengths as you do. In reality, everyone is concerned with their own persona. So you can boldly shake this titanic burden off your shoulders. The artificial need to be fabulous very often pushes people to copy others who have already achieved this title. Mindlessly copying someone else's script will create nothing more than a parody. Everyone has their own script. All you have to do is choose your own personal credo and then walk the talk. In any group, the leaders are always the ones who live true to their own credo. They become leaders because they have freed themselves from the responsibility of consulting others on the matter of how they should behave. Leaders have no need to imitate anyone. They simply know their worth and know what to do. They don't try to curry favor and have nothing to prove. When you come to know your own worth, everyone around you will automatically do the same. 72. The Unique Soul You are a truly unique individual. Your uniqueness is beyond competition. Claim the right to your originality and you will have a strong advantage over others who follow more well-charted trends and paths. Trying to be like him or her never works. Be yourself. Indulge yourself that luxury. If you put on the mask of an existing star, you will only become a copy or a parody. No one ever became a star by copying someone else. You will succeed when you stop trying to be like other people. You will succeed when you stop comparing the repeating existence of others to yourself. You will succeed when you acknowledge the splendor of your own individuality. Then others will have no choice but to concur. The fact that you desire the very best and that you are capable of anything has been hidden from you very carefully. People will tell you that you are naive to believe that you have unlimited capabilities, but in fact, the opposite is true. You are capable of creating a fabulous masterpiece. You are capable of creating a fabulous masterpiece, making ingenious discoveries, achieving outstanding results in sports, business, or any kind of professional activity. All you have to do is turn towards your heart. The heart has access to all knowledge, creation, and achievement. The task is to allow yourself to be yourself. What have the masks you wore ever done to help you achieve success or abundance? There is no point in changing yourself. That would be just another mask. If you get rid of the masks imposed on you by destructive pendulums, the treasure hidden in your soul will be revealed. You truly deserve the very best because you are a truly extraordinary, miraculous creation. Just allow yourself to be that. 73. A miserly mind. When a person's mind is in the pendulum's grip, they are forced to accept endless limitations and fulfill the role allotted to them in the game. Do not listen to the mind which wants to convince you that your goal is unrealistic. Remember, the mind is locked in a framework of false stereotypes. Love will eventually end and your dream will remain lying alone in a dusty drawer. Without the heart, the mind is not capable of very much in this world. Together, they are capable of anything because the unity of heart and mind gives rise to a magical power, the power of outer intention. Do not give up on your dreams simply because of some pumped up authority has claimed the very right to decide what is realistic and what isn't. Claim the right to a personal miracle. The mind treats the heart as if it were a child asking you to buy its favorite toy in a toy shop. The responses of the mind are usually fairly standard, such as, we can't afford it, don't be silly, I know best what you need, that's not what the likes of us needs, that's not realistic, not everyone is so blessed, you don't have the skills or ability. He or she is way out of your league, just like everyone else. 
the mind works according to logic, which is imposed by pendulums who benefit from keeping their followers on a short leash, denying them the freedom to choose their own dreams. For the heart, there is no logic. It interprets everything literally. The mind says you have no money, but the heart doesn't want money. It wants to toy. Motivated by the fact that you have no money, the mind places a ban on the toy. It's not realistic. It's unachievable. And all the heart can do is retreat into itself and forget about it. With that, you've witnessed the funeral of your personal dream. The mind cannot fathom how to make the dream come true. And so it won't let the dream come into the layer of your personal world. Because as far as the mind is concerned, everything in life has to be logical and clear. All you have to do is agree to have, and outer intention will take care of the have. 74. The Greedy Soul What makes a person one of the elite? The answer? Their own unique path. As soon as you go down your own way, the treasures of the world will reveal to you, and then others will look at you and wonder, how did you do it? Have the audacity not to give a damn about stereotypes. Have the audacity to believe in the limitless potential of your soul. Have the audacity to claim the right of your very own great personality. If the mind will always allow it, the soul will find the way to realize your dream. Don't be too shy to go after the whole hog and order everything you want. Be realistic. Demand the impossible. Whatever goal you set for yourself, it will be difficult to achieve without the context. Whatever goal you set for yourself, it will be difficult to achieve within the context of a rational worldview. The stereotype of the unachievable goal is the most rigid of all. The mind will ask, how do I achieve it? That is when your heart needs to say, be quiet. That's not your concern. We are choosing a toy. When you are at the threshold of making a choice, limitations should be of no concern to you whatsoever. Did you want to have a bow? What about having your own yacht? Did you want to have a flat? What about your own mansion? Did you want to be the head of the department? What about the president of a corporation? Did you want to buy a cheap plot of land and build your own house? What about having your own island in the Mediterranean? Did you want to work a lot to earn a lot of money? How about not having to work at all, living for your own pleasure? The list of whatabouts can go on forever. You cannot imagine how modest your requests are in comparison to what you could have if you went after your own personal goal through your own personal door. 75. Money. After all, start moving towards your goal and then money will follow automatically as an accompanying attribute. If you are not on your own true path yet, remember this rule. Don't think about the fact that you don't have enough money. Think about having money. Concentrate on the fact that you have money. It doesn't matter how much. The important thing is that you have it, and as soon as you have it, you will have more of it. Receive money with love and joy and let go of it easily. Don't shrimp and save. The more you shrimp, the less you have. Likewise, don't accumulate large sums of money without saving for something. In particular, otherwise you will lose it. Create momentum. Funds flow through a pipe, not through a reservoir. When a have-not stands at a shop counter, they count every penny, wondering how to economize spend as little as stringently possible and constantly complain about how everything is so expensive. Their thoughts are focused on one thing. There is never enough money. This thought form is manifest in physical reality. How could be otherwise? They are standing in front of a mirror. Don't think about the money you don't have. Think about the money you do have. And you will always find something in your purse. If you don't have the funds for a certain purchase right now, do not spend time regretting it. Try to put it off until later. You know that funds will appear soon. This way, you create the corresponding image, which will gradually become reflected in reality. There is another powerful ritual you can use. Collect all the small things, the abandoned coins you find, the particularly the small rusty ones that no one bothers, and say, you are home now, dear coins. I will look after you, and you will call money to me. I take care of money, and money loves me and comes to me. Just try it and see. 76. The Comfort Zone People are free to choose whatever they want, it is just that not many believe it is their right to do so. If you feel unsure of yourself when you are trying on wealth, fame, or giddy size for success, it is clearly still out of your comfort zone. If it isn't in your comfort zone, it will never be yours. However, you can expand the zone. Create a mental slide of your goal and hold it permanently in sight. Return to the mental picture and you have drawn it again and again. Relish the details, add new images to the picture, and learn to see yourself in a different way. You deserve the very best. It is all realistic. There are no constraints. The limits are all in your mind. Positive slides can help introduce the incredible things into your comfort zone. When you stop beating waves of uneasiness from the thought forms, your dream might be accessible to you. Doubts will cease and belief will be transformed into knowledge. The heart will come into harmony with the mind and you will feel the resolve to have. It is pointless trying to persuade the heart. The heart does not discourse. It simply knows. 
The heart cannot be persuaded, but it can be trained. It has to get used to the new comfort zone. Don't worry if you still feel unsure and don't see yet how your goal can be realized. Continue systematically visualizing the slide. When the goal is completely integrated into your comfort zone, outer intention will open the door to the world of your dreams. This is a fortune taken by lengthy siege. 77. Allies. You are alone to the extent that you desire to be alone. Any inanimate object can be transformed into an entity and made your ally if you treat it as such. You could create your own talisman, a toy of any kind. With all seriousness, consider it alive and helping you. Everything around you, buildings, trees, furniture, dishes, home appliances, computers will all help you and look after you if you decide that this is the case. Don't ask your allies for anything. Treat them in the same way that you treat the mirror in the world. Be confident that they are looking after you. Know this and regularly repeat the thought to yourself. Just as the physical body can create like from like, so can the heart. When you think of an object as a living being, your thought form transforms into an energetic entity, a kind of phantom with a virtual soul. Phantoms are invisible and intangible because they are existing only in the metaphysical space. Nevertheless, once born, they exist objectively and are capable just like any other thought form or influencing physical reality. So if you want to, you can boldly animate the objects around you and communicate with them as you would with any living being. Treat them with affection, respect, and love, and they will repay you in kind. For example, if you would treat your car as if it were a living being, you care about it very much, it will guard you from accidents. When you have to throw something away, don't forget to thank it first. Don't worry. As soon as you forget about objects that you no longer need, their virtual soul will cease to exist. And finally, 78. Guardian Angel. If you are having a hard time and no one to lean on, create yourself a guardian angel. If you believe in your guardian angel, they will exist, and the opposite is also true. If you don't believe in your angel, they won't exist. The very thought that there is a being who looks after you and you alone helps give you this balanced sense of confidence. Never take offense at your angel to say nothing of getting angry with them. You have no idea what misfortune your angel is doing to protect you from. Celebrate your successes, but don't forget to thank your guardian angel and remind your angel that you love them. This will make your angel stronger and they will handsomely reward you. It is true that every person has their own guardian angel. This is for you to decide. You create your own reality. As long as you believe in angels, yours will exist as an energetic entity. If you are convinced that your angel is looking after you, then it will be true. Pagans who worshipped all sorts of invented gods and fetishes were no fools. You could picture your angel as taking any form. Of itself, it does not look like anything. You give it form with your imagination. So imagine your angel taking the guise you feel comfortable with. If you feel lonely, share your feelings with your angel. If you are dealing with misfortune or even cause for joy, share this with your angel too. The more sincerity you love your angel and express your gratitude for all kinds of little things, the more sincerity you love your angel with and express your gratitude for all kinds of little things, the more powerful it will become and the more help it will give you. Remember, there is no such thing as a fantasy. Any invention of the mind is in fact an objective physical reality. Transurfing.